Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the live coverage and commentary of the third round of the World Seniors Team Championship here in Struga at the Ohrid Lake in North Macedonia. After the usual 15 minute delay, we now have the uh, moves from the games. And uh, I have to say that today already we have the clashes of the favorites. In fact, uh, we start covering the games from the S50 section and uh, on board one we have the clash between uh, North Macedonian team of Alkaloid against Team USA. So, uh, some very exciting matchups on the boards today. Um, and uh, let's not waste much time and start covering the matches on a game by game basis. On board one in the in the match between North Macedonia Alkaloid and USA, we have Kirill Gergiev facing Grigory Kaidanov. And we have the first moves on the board, d4, d5, c4, e6, knight f3, knight f6. And now it will be interesting to see whether Gergiev goes for the Catalan with g3, which is a no he does not, he goes bishop g5. Uh, and uh, okay, bishop g5, okay, no need to talk about the Catalan or the other options now. So uh, bishop g5 is a curious way to uh, enter perhaps queen's gambit declined. And it also aims to limit some of black's options. For example, the usual move knight c3 allows way too many options for black. For example, I'll just put it on the board, knight c3. So black here has a really lot of options here. There is the Ragozin with bishop b4. There is the Vienna with d takes c4. There is a semi-slav with c6, there is the semi-tarash with c5, and there is the queen's gambit declined with bishop e7 or knight bd7. Not to mention the, the uh, let's say, rarer versions of the queen's gambit declined with moves like a6 or h6. So, by playing bishop g5, white aims to limit some of these options, but on the other hand it allows others, and one of these options is d takes c4. Obviously, bishop e7 would have led to the queen's gambit declined. And now Kirill plays queen a4 check. So now we have some sort of a... Well, I'm not really sure where this <laughs> opening falls into. It's not exactly the queen's gambit declined. But it's not... I, I mean, it could be the semi-slav if black plays c6. Uh, or some variation of the semi-slav. But um, now again, a lot depends on what black does. c6 or knight bd7. Or, or even bishop uh, d7, even though I'm not so sure that's very good, because queen c4, bishop c6, knight e5 may be a bit problematic, even though bishop d5 there is there as well. Uh, so, the most popular move is knight bd7, followed by c6. So, Kaidanov is thinking, let's go quickly over the other boards. Board 2, we have Elvest against Nedev. And we have e4 uh, by Jan Elvest. We saw yesterday that Jan Elvest actually went for d4 in his game against Montenegro and won a very uh, wild game um, where he was at some point even worse. Uh, you can actually see the details of that game in my report that is published on the FIDE website. But here he goes for e4, I think mostly because uh, Nedev has a really uh, well analyzed but also very limited repertoire. So against e4 he only plays the Sveshnik of Sicilian. So c5, knight, f3, knight, c6 and now bishop b5 which nowadays has actually, a, a, I would call it the mainline status along the open Sicilian with d4. And since the Sveshnikov is really deeply analyzed, then I can assure you that Nedev has analyzed it for more than 30 years. I have experienced this myself, uh, seeing him play it for more than 30 years. Uh, so, and honestly, I don't remember the last time anybody entered the Sveshnikov against him. Everybody, myself included in the past, have always uh, chosen uh, Bishop b5 against him because... 
he doesn't feel that comfortable in these uh, maneuvering positions arising after bishop b5. But this maneuvering that I mentioned actually may not be exactly applicable because here he goes for e5, a move that he hasn't played before. Before he has played e6, he has played this twice against me, he has tried knight f6, and he has tried g6, which are all main moves. But the move a5, e5, sorry, uh, has uh, become increasingly popular after it has been used by Magnus Carlsen uh, and then also other players. Mm, the idea is really straightforward to prevent uh, white's d4, but this is not uh, really uh, possible if white insists on it. So after short castle bishop d6, d6 in fact the move d4, which looks insane, because the pawn can be taken by three pieces, two pawns and one knight, is actually a, a possible move. And I have analyzed this in quite some depth and found this line to be very, very dangerous for for black because he must walk a really uh, thin line uh, between, uh, well, uh, of, of, of forcing lines and uh, in order not to be worse or just simply busted. And uh, yeah, it will be very interesting to, for me to see the, uh, how this game develops because uh, I will also compare it to my own notes. And I'm really curious how this goes and I will keep you actually updated on this. So uh, net f took knight d4. Okay, let me just open my file and I can check and follow what's going on uh, in, this, in this line. So it takes... Uh, knight d4 okay uh, so actually uh, after knight d4 I have mostly analyzed the move bishop c4 but it always goes for knight d4 cd4 c3 and this I, it's not something I have looked at to be honest um, at least not in some greater detail but it's it is a it is the alternative to bishop c4 and now I will just update what's going on in fact uh, this has been the choice of Wesley so in a very recent game against Magnus Carlsen. However, in that game, uh, instead of a6 here played by Nedev, Carlsen played bishop c5. And uh, uh, then it is a proper transposition to, uh, the, uh, uh, to the lines after bishop c4 that I, I mentioned because after... Let, okay, let me just not jump to a conclusion. Let me just check. Um, no, actually it is not it is not because the bishop then drops back to d3 in the game so Carlsen so it, it's different direction but in this case uh, we don't get to see that uh, Nedev plays a6 there are very very few games in this line uh, my that database has only four and uh, I think one of them is a computer game and three of them are human games with the strongest player uh, by black being Bugara Sadli and he played this uh, in March uh, this year at the individual European Championship uh, the game followed bishop c4, bishop c5, b4, bishop a7 so bishop c4, bishop c5, b4, bishop a7. Uh, it appears that Elvis is thinking, maybe he did not prepare that deeply for this line. Maybe just quickly saw, saw Carlsen and, and just went with it, not checking the alternative a6. But uh, any, anyway, it's an interesting theoretical duel on board 2. Let's move on to board 3. And here we have Bogdanovsky against Novikov. And d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6, bishop f4. Again, uh, I would say it's a sign of the times. Bogdanovsky has never played the London system before. Uh, in fact, he has made, he has played the Catalan or his, all his life, achieving great results with it. But, well, uh, new times, new habits, or tempora omores, as they say. So, he succumbs to the modern fashion and goes for the London system. 
It was likely intended as a surprise, and especially as after c5, e3, queen, b6, he goes for the move c4. And this is definitely sharp stuff. Uh, usually London system players go either knight c3 or queen c1. But c4 is, is sharp, and obviously Novikov is thinking. I also want to check what I have on this, because it's interesting to, to know how the players are following the latest theory so uh, let me see um, where I have that so maybe it's here c5 e3 queen b6 yeah I, I haven't like I've looked at knight c3 and queen c1 but c4 is somewhat rare it's even played only I have only 27 games in my database compared to let's say more than 700 with knight c3 so Let's see c4. And now, so, not surprisingly, the most critical move for black is queen b2 and scores incredibly well. Over seven, like uh, almost 70% score in black's favor after queen b2. But it's likely that, uh, well, Bogdanovsky and possibly the team have looked at this in, in greater detail and uh, they have discovered. Uh, that white shouldn't really be worse in spite of the bad statistics. So <clears throat> I will quickly check this and uh, I'll let you know what I have. Even though in, in engine games the, the score is more or less uh, around 50%. So Queen b2, yes, it's possible, but probably safest is just to take on d4. Yeah, even though e6 is also a move. So okay, an early surprise by white, which is which is good for for Team Alkaloid. And let's go to board four, which is Irmolinsky Stanoyevsk. And here we have something familiar: Knight f3, d5, d4, e6, c4, c6. This has been Stanoyevsky's uh, repertoire for all his life. Uh, the Slav. And uh, here we have really no surprises, which on the other hand allows uh, his opponent to, to prepare for it. And Yermolinsky goes for queen c2, dc4, queen c4, knight f6, and g3. So this is the beginning of a long theory here, uh, and a lot of games being played in this line. The alternative is to go bishop g5, which, uh, or even knight bd2 and go for e4, but g3 is more like... Catalan style uh, play so we are still early on here and uh, yeah uh, well we will see how this develops let's now move on to the next match which is England against Italy on board one we have Adams against David so e4 c5 uh, it's always a uh, uh, I mean I think interesting to see people play the Sicilian against Adams because with his style uh, I think he has a really peculiar approach when playing the Sicilian with white, not the, you would say, in typical uh, English uh, style of uh, developed in the 80s with English attack going for the king, but more positionally inclined. So knight f3, e6, d4, cd4, knight d4, knight c6, knight c3, queen c7, the taiman of Sicilian. Uh, obviously white has a white choice against the taiman of lately, bishop e3, followed by queen f3, has been very popular and scoring pretty well for white. But knight cb5 is also a recent uh, a recent idea. And after queen b8, bishop d3. So again, it's it's kind of rare. Uh, and uh, David is already thinking for, for quite some time, which indicates that he was taken by surprise. I will also check this, yeah, because as you see, many interesting rarities in the opening, I will check the time man off. To see, I'm pretty sure I have not looked at this because uh, basically it didn't exist when I was investigating time man off in greater depth. So, in any case. Let's see what's going on. So 
So knight cb5, not knight db5, knight cb5. And this, yeah, I, I noticed some games with it, and uh, it has been played by Vidit against Bakro, uh, Ray Robson against Fear, uh, Vidit against Larkano, Maze against Lint, and the common denominator in all these games is that the Duda also played it. Uh, Eri Gaisi played it against Carlsen, and except for that last game, Eri Gaisi Carlsen, uh, the common denominator of all the other games is they were won by white. So, a fantastic surprise weapon, at least. Yeah, because it certainly doesn't refute the time enough. So, Queen b8, Bishop d3, and in this position, uh, the choices black has. Uh, a6 and knight f6 and likely uh, this is what David is thinking about for example Carlsen played knight f6 uh, short castle a6 against Erigaisi and that led let me just show you knight f6 short castle a6 now in view that the, the knight on d4 is hanging white must take takes Carlsen took with a d pawn and after knight d4 played bishop d6. Yeah. And after knight f3 e5, um, black seems to be doing okay. So I'm certain that uh, Adams prepared something different than following Eric Ice's game. So this is it will also be interesting to see how it continues. So let's move on to the next game. Godena against Ems. E4, C5, C3. Yeah, another <laughs> lifetime repertoire uh, of the white player. Yeah, Godena has been playing the uh, the Alapin all his life. So C3, D5 by Ems. Again, this is it's it's a it's a well double-edged sword when it comes to sticking to your lifetime choices. On one hand, you know these choices inside out. Uh, you know all the variations. You have revised the variations. You you remember them from for decades. Uh, but on the other hand, it's a you're sitting a sitting duck when it comes to preparation. And uh, uh, in modern times, I mean, in the past, without computers, it was practically better to stick to your choices, play your lines in spite of any possible preparation because that preparation could often be flawed as it would be a human preparation and even if you were surprised by a human preparation in your own lines um, it was quite realistic to start thinking on your own and often refute that preparation over the board but nowadays with the uh, engine preparation actually this is no longer so easy or even possible and therefore the modern approach is actually to um, to uh, vary your opening choices in spite of your preferences for certain lines even if you had played them all your life so here I think we will have such a duel where Godena sticks to his usual lines and M's preparing something concrete so ed5, d4, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e2. Uh, you remember I mentioned the move knight a3 uh, in the game Minyanich Novikov in, uh, in the match Montenegro USA, which, as I said, I preferred personally uh, from White's perspective uh, as it avoids these positions with an IQP, but Godena doesn't mind playing the IQP position, so he goes bishop e2. CD, CD, there we, we have it, the IQP with its usual pros and cons, e6, knight c3, queen d6, castle, bishop e7, all standard theory, knight b5, queen d8, bishop f4, a way to get the bishop to an active position, threatening knight c7, knight d5 is the only defense, Yeah, attacking the bishop, covering c7, bishop g3, short castle, rook c1, and bishop d7. Well, I have to say that Ems did not prepare anything dramatic. Uh, he likely just uh, checked Godena's games and decided that, okay, he's com he feels comfortable in this position. He can play it, play against the IQP, 
uh, use uh, his understanding uh, and uh, just play a game of, of chess without any attempt to catch his opponent uh, with preparation. Well, I mean, it's it's a energy saving approach because it saves a lot of time and energy uh, in the preparation process. So it will be a long game here. Board three, Fleer against Ortega. So we have a Slav here, d4, d5, c4, c6, knight c3, d4. Early take on c4, e4, b5, a4, b4, knight a2, uh, knight f6, e5, knight d5, bishop c4, e6, knight f3, a5, bishop d2, all standard theory. Um, it's a positionally complex uh, position that we are getting here because uh, if you look at the structure black has a bad bishop but with his last move he allowed for knight a6 so the bishops will be exchanged but uh, that won't be the end of black's worries because uh, with his last move bishop d2 white allows for knight c1 and then likely knight b3 and that pawn on a5 will always require attention and the knight on b3 also controls the c5 square and the liberating move c5 is also uh, a matter of timing and whether uh, black will be able to uh, execute it under favorable circumstances so ortega starts with knight d7 because bishop a6 shouldn't really run away and can be played at any point and unless white goes bishop queen e2 but then likely knight b6 attacks the bishop and attacks the knight the the pawn on a4 which is kind of unpleasant um, so this is theory and uh, okay players still moving relatively fast so uh, we will see how it goes the scenario likely scenario is that uh, light squared bishops get exchanged white knight gets to b3 and then uh, well it depends on on uh, um, on the on the de on the concrete details board four we have borgo against arkel and we have Keith's favorite opening here, the Karakan. D4, D5, E, D, C, D. We see Keith playing his, again, lifetime choice of uh, the Karakan, his main defense. And let's see what Borgo prepared. So Bishop D3, Knight C6, C3, Knight F6, H3. I mentioned this when we were looking at uh, Ems' game yesterday, when Ems chose Bishop F4. And I mentioned that H3 has been the uh, choice of Magnus Carlsen. Um, the idea of being to limit the mobility of the bishop by taking control over the g4 square so g6 by keith knight f3 bishop f5 and again i mentioned uh, this in the uh, game by kutirov from the first round when bishop f5 is played my personal understanding of the position was that here uh, the, uh, of the three possible options leaving the tension between the bishops retreating or taking uh, taking is the worst one because after bishop f5 g5 the g file has not been blocked and black can use it for the rook and then develop the bishop on d6 rather than on g7 therefore um, i think that white should not take on f5 and in fact borgo decides to remove the bishop from the possible exchange by playing bishop e2 so bishop g7 bishop f4 a castle castle and a6 this was also played uh, in the Emps game. I said that uh, it's a useful little move, but it's not a start of a possible minority attack with b5 because uh, that would weaken the c5 square. And as I also mentioned in that game, the, uh, uh, it is often white who plays on the queen side in, in, in this reversed calls, but like I said, a4, a5. Yeah, the knight can come d2, b3, c5. Uh, then there are also ideas with the rook transfer. Let's say rook a3, rook b3, rook b6, which, like I said, it was played by Ding Liren in the match against the Pomiachi. He won a very, very nice game in this structure, which arose from the London system. So check that game. It's a very instructive one, how white can play on the queen side. And there are also some instructive Carlsen games when he plays on the queen side in this reversed Carlsbad. So we checked the first uh, two matches. Let me see. Um, 
the first two matches in the uh, S50 section. And now let's move on to the S65 where we will also check the first two matches and then we will see um, the, the developments further on. So on board one we have uh, North, another more North Macedonian team. Uh, the veterans from Macedonia were the surprise leaders after two rounds having beaten two of the favorites in the first two matches and now they are on board one. Here they play the number one rated uh, ranked team Germany Lasker. So on board one we have Ljubomir Ilic against Rainer Knack and here we have the, the French e4 e6 d4 d5 92 Taraj variation by Ilic. Ilic has been a, usually a, an aggressive tactical player in the past but here in this tournament we I, I noticed that he's been playing really he's trying to be very very solid on board one not minding a draw uh, even with the white pieces so 92 is by far the most solid line against the French if we don't count the exchange variation yeah so c5 by knack knight f3 knight f6 ed5 and now ed5 uh, it's possible to take with a knight or with a queen but knack was likely uh, decided to uh, to to play uh, with an IQP bishop b5 bishop d7 bishop d7 97 it's usually uh, useful for black to exchange the light squared bishops because his own bishop is limited by the uh, IQP which is on a light square so short castle bishop e7 takes on c5 knight c5 knight b3 uh, white has absolute control over the square in front of the pawn but black has active pieces and control of the e4 square so this is a more or less equal position where white can try to milk it yeah for a long time but black is objectively fine so knight c4 bishop e3 short castle c3 queen c7 and h3 standard position nothing much going on i expect things to proceed solidly here white will, white will move around the d4 square black will put his pieces in the center and then we will see if if one of the players uh, stirs up some trouble or not but for now it's just a very solid position on board one for both players on board two we have Meister against Kralevsky and we have e4 e5 bishop c4 uh, Kralevsky is a, again pretty well known player in, in Macedonia uh, his lifelong choice against knight f3 has been the Petrov with knight f6 I have played him many times uh, in the Petro, the, well, facing his Petrov. Uh, and here we see actually white uh, deciding to avoid the Petrov. So knight, bishop playing bishop c4, knight f6, d3, and c6. This is the way to kind of, let's say, punish white for not playing knight f3 because black manages to push d5 early on. Knight f3 now, d5, bishop b3, bishop d6. Black has a choice here, uh, bishop d6 being one of the main ones, bishop b4 being the, the second, and a5 being the third. But here just Kralevsky goes for really possibly the simplest setup for black, not necessarily the best, but definitely the simplest. Just defending the pawn. Yeah. Knight c3 puts more pressure on d5, and now it just simply releases the tension on d4. Uh, now knight g5 is, is the move that needs to be played because white wants to recapture on e4 with a piece, not with a pawn, which would lead to a symmetrical structure and not real problems for black. So short castle, defends f7, knight c4, knight d4, knight d4, and now bishop f5. And uh, uh, black is okay with um, relinquishing the bishop pair, for example here, knight d6 queen d6 is quite okay for him because he has really free development and space advantage with which compensates for the lack of the dark squared bishop so white goes queen f3 and now he gives up the light squared bishop by taking on e4 uh, bishop takes e4 d takes e4 i suppose queen e4 was possible but maybe maybe uh white was worried about something like king h5 which I would imagine Kralevsky 
thinking about because he has always been an aggressive and tactical player. But d4 stabilizes the structure, uh, being a symmetrical one, and now white will try to play uh, and somehow take advantage of the uh, unopposed light squared bishop, even though generally these positions are holdable for, for black. So knight d7, intending knight c5, c3, freeing the c2 square for the bishop, knight c5, bishop c2, and now knight e6. Sometimes knight f4 can be possible, yeah? Short castle, a5, useful move, uh, which also secures the c5 square by avoiding some uh, b4 attacks. And also the idea can be a4 and grab some space on the queen side. So a4 by white, and now queen is 7 A very solid position for, for black here. White has the bishop pair, but for now the unopposed light squared bishop is not doing much it goes back to b3 it can always be harassed by <coughs> knight c5 and uh, the knight can also jump to f4 even though that can be controlled by g3 and here i think the the main uh, intrigue in the position will be whether black like i said uh, a tactical and aggressive player uh, will be able to hold his nerve and not lash out so this will be the, I think, the key in this in this game, uh, because if Black doesn't lash out, he should be able to draw. But if he lashes out, then the position may open in favor of the uh, pair of bishops. So psychologically, uh, this will be, I think, the uh, the key uh, moment aspect, yeah, in this game. On board three, we have Stoshevsky against Kalinchev, and again, okay, Knight f3 has been Stoshevsky's favorite move all his life but after c5 e3 is not something that he has normally played he has always been a, a, a huge fan of uh, peered setups so normally he would always go g3 and then some all variations of d3 e4 or c4 and so on because he has played the peers in the modern modern with black against both e4 and d4 but here we see him uh, play something different so e3 yeah. and um, honestly i think this is the the first time i see him not fianchettoing his uh, king's bishop whether that be with white or black so knight f6 d4 g6 and now dc5 already giving it uh, uh, giving the game a, a f like a more original direction and uh, now if black wants to get the pawn back he should give the check yeah and then take on c5 but he goes bishop g7 and after c3 it won't be that easy to get that pawn back so we already we have some sharp development here short castle knight bd2 and queen c7 um, and knight b3 so white will remain a pawn up and uh, black will seek some compensation so already as early as move seven we have a sharp development here so rook d8 queen d4 okay this is interesting it anticipates d6 and then the queen goes to h4 being away from possible attacks on the d file so d6 cd6 rook d6 queen h4 knight c6 and bishop b2 <coughs> so White is a pawn up, very solid position, some problems with the development of the bishop on c1, but if e4 is played, then the bishop can freely be developed. For now, I can't really see any concrete compensation for black. He has some lead in development, but white is solid and pawn up, so actually quite can be quite optimistic here of his chances. And on board 4, we have Köhler against Mile Trajkovsky and we have an English opening c4 c5 g3 g6 bishop g2 bishop g7 knight c3 knight c6 a3 <coughs> symmetrical English a3 is the well it used to be one of the main attempts but lately white has tried all sorts of stuff with b3 e3 even sometimes h4 
but okay a3 is okay knight f6 rook b1 intending b4 short castle white black allows b4 even though it was possible to stop it by a, playing a5 so short castle b4 d6 and now d3 normally it's white is happy if he manages to push b4 in the english it's not a great deal but it's some sort of local success let's say and i think okay he already um well white could be happy with the outcome knight d7 now it's a bit strange move uh, attacking obviously the knight on c3 so bishop d2 and now a5 okay i i suppose it's possible but i can't say i really like it for for black because it weakens the b5 square and now bc5 and knight c5 so really black has problems now on the b file the b5 square the b7 pawn for the time okay white needs to finish development something like knight f3 and castling and then white will start to play on the on the b file whereas black what can black do is not entirely clear maybe some d5 break if somehow can be arranged i don't see how maybe with the help of e6 to play something in the center because otherwise how can black uh, achieve um, any compensation for these weaknesses on the b file so i think the opening here has gone well for for white and uh, in a way let's say evens out the lack of a pawn in the game stoshevsky kalinchev on board three so for now kind of a balanced match on on board one after the opening let's move on to the next match which is england one against slovakia and on board one we have a classical encounter between john nunn and lyubomir touching these players have played a lot in the past and now they meet in a senior event and it's already on move one a surprise by Vtachnik e4 d6 because Vtachnik has been um, he's been an idol practitioner for decades yeah and uh, he has played it even against none himself and um, it's kind of hard to say whether uh, what was the the reason to avoid uh, yet another sicilian duel maybe he wasn't feeling like uh, entering sicilian duels with with none so he goes for the pirts d4 knight f6 knight c3 and g6 uh, and none goes for the sharpest uh, one of the most principled lines against the pirts which is the austrian attack with f4 bishop g7 and now knight f3 um, i have recently read some uh discussions about the most precise move here obviously knight f3 is the most natural move to play but there is something to be said about starting with bishop d3 the idea is that after knight f3 apart from castling which was played in the game black has the additional option of c5 and in fact for example this was played by fisher uh, in game 19 of his match against pasky and it's a decent line dc5 queen a5 and now in view of the pin on the knight black threatens knight e4 and now you see the point so playing bishop d3 before knight f3 here stops that line because c5 dc5 now makes no sense queen a5 would not attack the pawn on e4 because it's defended by the bishop and this way would this bishop d3 would have circumvented this additional option by uh, by black but none went for knight f3 and black went for short castle uh, not playing c5 and now bishop d3 this has been the uh, uh, the uh, choice of bobby fisher who uh, he, uh, he let's say evolved f big, uh, from uh, first he started playing he, he played bishop e2 in the periods winning some games but he, then he was well violently defeated in the curacao candidates by korchnoi in this line after c5 and so on and then he moved on to bishop d3 after in, in a line in which i think he won all his games uh, that he played uh, admittedly with the weaker opposition but still uh, he won everything and after bishop d3 there are i would say two main lines 
here for for black one is was played the one played by Vtashnik with knight c6 and the other one is the more Benoni inclined move knight a6 with the idea of c5 so these are the main directions even though I think again reading somewhere lately that uh, these Benoni let's say positions like short castle c5 d5 are actually easier to play for for white so something like queen e1 queen h4 f5 ideas made or also more positional ideas uh, by playing in the center after e6 d6 and so on so they there may be a shift towards knight c6 lately even though knight a6 was very very popular some time ago and after knight c6 now white has a choice uh, notably fisher played e5 here which is the other uh, alternative but none goes for short castle allowing e5 again white has a choice uh, none goes for d5 but it's possible first to take on e5 yeah so it's possible to take and push d5 it's also possible to take with the other pawn and push f5 so quite a few choices for white he goes for d5 knight e7 and now king h1 a prophylactic move removing the king from the open diagonal avoiding possible checks so e takes f4 bishop takes f4 bishop g4 Queen d2, avoiding the pin, preparing bishop h6, let's say. Oh, so we have actually an early finish. So bishop took on f3, rook f3, knight g4, rook a f1, and a draw was agreed. Oh well. Okay. Uh, what can we say? Uh, the players decided to just to call it a day early on. Uh, well, what to do? And surprisingly, we have a draw on board too, as well. So in the game Plachet Kakosten, we had d4, knight f6, knight f3, e6, c4, bishop b4. The Bogo Indian is a part of Kosten's repertoire. Bishop d2, a5, g3, d6, bishop g2, knight d7, knight c3, castles, a3, takes, takes, knight e4, queen c2, f5, and castle and draw. Okay, two quick draws on, on the first two boards. Uh, well... Sometimes it happens in, in, in team events, team matches. Uh, well, nothing really to comment here. So let's move on board three. Chapman against Lunch. Or Lunch, not sure about the pronunciation. Um, and here we have a King's Indian. No, actually we have a, some sort of a modern, but the, the position looks like a King's Indian. So d4, g6, c4, bishop g7, knight f3, d6, g3, knight c6 bishop g2 and bishop d7 okay this is somewhat strange normally e5 would be played short castle e5 now okay d5 knight c e7 e4 knight f6 well i mean if black waited for so long with the development of the knight then he could have tried to to push f5 before playing knight f6 maybe first playing h6 to cover the g5 square to avoid some knight g5 uh, moves and then go f5 at least that would have been more in line with the ideas of postponing the development of the knight to f6 but knight f6 knight c3 short castle knight e1 knight e8 knight e3 f5 f4 yeah this is a typical reaction for white in the uh, fianchetto king's indian when uh, black plays knight c6 i can show you for example this here g3 and let's just say Black plays knight f6, typical king's indian, yeah, knight c3, short castle, bishop g2, knight c6, short castle, and now e5, yeah, d5, knight e7, okay. Lately, it was discovered that knight b8 with the idea of a5 is uh, superior to knight e7, and white started avoiding this line altogether. So this is the latest development, but knight e7 has been the main move for many for many years and now e4 knight e8 knight e1 f5 knight d3 and on the next move white plays f4 and it turns out that uh, c3 d3 knights are better placed for the uh, simplifications and opening of the center than the e7 e8 knights and this line has been analyzed to great depth i have even played it with white uh, and it leads to an advantage for white even though it's not easy there are some, some long lines some precision is required and here we have something similar so we have f4 ef4 knight f4 
And here you see the problem that black faces. The problem is the weakness of the e6 square. So very often we get here uh, the knight landing on e6, black is forced to take the e6, which opens the long diagonal for the bishop, and also uh, uh, well allows for some knight d5 ideas and so on. So it's, it's a dangerous position for black. Uh, and uh, here it looks like that, well, white has, at least theoretically speaking, uh, better chances. And on board four, we have some English opening. Petran Pal against Chris Baker, starting with g3, e5 and c4. So knight f6, bishop g2 and c6. This has been considered as the best antidote to to this uh, line with early g3 with the delaying the development of the knight to c3. It was advocated by Keres and uh, Botvinnik was also uh, of the opinion that this is the best way to deal with the lines when white postpones the development of the knight to c3. So there are two moves here, knight f3 and d4. Uh, here white goes for d4, takes, takes and d5. This is the point of the move c6 and the, in view of the absence of the knight on c3, white doesn't have enough control over the d5 square and black can execute this liberating push. So knight f3, bishop e7, c d5, uh, pretty sure this was not played queen d6, but rather uh, queen d5 was played, I assume. So something like queen d5, knight c3, queen d4, knight d4, castles, castles was played, and then we are back in the game. So, uh, objectively balanced endgame, but with a lot of play ahead. Uh, the plans are pretty clear. White will start will want to advance with his majority, and black will start want to advance with his majority. But this is easier said than done because uh, both these advances uh, have to be planned carefully uh, because they just leave uh, well um, weaknesses behind as they as they move forward. As the problem with pawns, they can't can't go back and. Uh, also, a lot will depend on the peace development and the control over the D, of the D file. Yeah, so, still, it's a let's say it's an end game, but uh, Black has not finished the development. There are some issues with the development of the light squared bishop. Where does it go? So, uh, we will see how this uh, proceeds. So. Um, Let's now go back to the S50 section and have a second roundup of the matches. So I I plan to, to stick to the uh, top two boards in both sections so we can get a better, uh, well, a greater depth in the analysis of the games and a better understanding how the matches are evolving because these are the matches that, well, the favorites are playing on, on these two top boards and, uh, uh, well, uh, I think it's of the greatest interest to follow these two matches. So let's go for a second roundup of the matches in S50. So obviously things have developed since we left off after Queen A4 check. Uh, the game Gergiev Kaidanov. Uh, Black played the most commonly played move Knight BD7, Knight BD2, A6 intending b5 so white takes queen c4 and now c5 yeah this is the usual uh, free move for for um, uh, black in these uh, structures uh, as usual in, in queen spawn openings uh, black needs to find a way to develop the light squared bishop but usually here in, in view of the exposed Position of the queen on c4, similar to the Catalan b5 and bishop b7, should solve the problem. So black white took dc5, bishop c5, e3, and now b5. Yeah, as I mentioned, the bishop is comfortably developed on b7, queen b3, bishop b7. Now both sides finish development, castle, castle, queen b6. So, well, black doesn't have problems, successful opening for, for him. Uh, why doesn't have problems either? 
Uh, but uh, in view of the symmetrical uh, nature of the position and uh, absence of pawn breaks, this will mean that we will get a lot of peace play here. And uh, uh, the only way to create some sort of play for white is to play the move a4 that he played in the game to kind of try to do something about this, uh, let's say, more advanced pawn on b5. But black plays bishop d5 immediately targeting this queen. This is a kind of a, <laughs> let's say, hapless queen. Yeah, it went uh, queen a4, queen c4, queen b3, now queen c2. A lot of moves for the queen. And by remove, removing the queen from b3, black also solved the problem of the pressure on b5. So now rook c8 is possible, h6, any sensible move would do. And uh, yeah, uh, no problems for black in, in this position. So I would say that if the su intended surprise was to go bishop g4, g5 on move 4, I didn't manage to pose any serious problems in the opening in this game. Let's move on board two, where okay, well, only few moves have been played, and uh, after a6, instead of bishop c4, Elvest goes for bishop a4, and I think this is a novelty. I will check quickly. Yeah, it's a novelty. Everybody else has played bishop c4, um, so. Bishop a4 is a new move, and uh, uh, Nedef continue with the uh, with Bishop c5 in the same way as after Bishop c4, defending the the pawn on d4. And now Elvis is thinking again. <clears throat> Both players have spent some time. Probably Nedef was surprised by Bishop a4, as it's a new move. But he played the usual Bishop c5, defending the pawn on d4. It appears that both players are, are on their own here. Uh, so I'm just curious to see what's going on here. So I'm checking some uh, some lines, and uh, well, usual moves here are either b4, uh, knight d2, and even f4. Yeah, which is a sacrifice, but one that can lead to very dangerous initiative. And this is a common theme in these early d4 lines against the e5 variation. And this can become very dangerous for for black if he takes, <coughs> if he accepts the sacrifice. Yeah, but Elvis is thinking, and <coughs> let's see what he comes up with. Still the early stages, and. I wouldn't be surprised if, if this game uh, gets wild at some point and uh, especially in time trouble because it's it's like eight moves only and uh, players have already spent like 25 minutes or 20 25 minutes so so it's it's early to say but the the, the fact that they are on their own uh, it looks promising uh, so that we get uh, an interesting game Bogdanovsky Novikov Okay, black decided here to take on b2, knight d2, knight c6, dc5, and e6. And it's funny that uh, even though it was Bogdanovsky who uh, played the opening surprise with c4, just two moves later, he's the one who's burning all the time. So he has spent more than half an hour here compared to only 10 minutes by Novikov. And this is the, the danger of, let's say, playing sharp lines without proper preparation, because even though the opponent may not play the best line, if you're not, uh, if you don't know or if you don't feel the, uh, the, uh, the character of the position and you don't feel the nuances of the position, having to figure them out over the board uh, can turn out to be difficult. And uh, uh, so that's why it's not always, uh, well, uh, advisable to enter sharp lines without really, really, really deep preparation. And here it appears that 
And when I say deep preparation, I mean also checking the inferior lines, not just the best lines that the engine gives. And here it may be that this was the case, because I will check uh, now uh, the theory. So queen b2, knight bd2, this was played, yeah. knight c6, possible, even though e6 has been played more often. So knight c6. And here already dc5 is a new move because okay bishop e5 has been played cd5 but already no actually we actually have a transposition to an, another variation e6 and now quite a few moves have been played cd5 and rook c1 <coughs> being the uh, main ones and in fact this line can is actually reached via another move order and i'll just show it to you which is on move uh, so c5 e3 e3 black plays let's say knight c6 knight bd2 queen b6 and now dc5 queen b2 c4 e6 and we are we have arrived at the game position so this is the much more common way to reach the position but it appears that this london system was prepared as just a one game surprise by bogdanovsky and he did not take into consideration this possible transposition. <coughs> well, it just uh, well, if this was the case, it just points to a inadequate opening preparation on his part, entering a sharp line uh, with a lot of uh, concrete lines without uh, proper preparation. So figure them out, them out over the board is not the uh, well the best situation to be in. So this may turn out to be a, a problem for, for Alkaloid in this match. And on board 4, we had, well, we have some sort of a Catalan position. So we had g3 and now queen d5. Okay, this is, I'm pretty sure, over the world improvisation. I have never seen this move before. Black normally, I would expect to develop with knight bd7 or b5, bishop b7. But queen d5 is for sure over the board improvisation queen c2 and now knight a6 again i don't like this for for black uh, because it's improvising on move six it's just uh, not the way how how i mean i mean how you you should approach a, a, a game if you're serious about it yeah yeah i'm not even talking about being responsible towards the team and so on but also to, towards the game. So a3 by Yermolinsky. I don't think anything was wrong with knight c3, but okay, a3, stopping knight before, c5, knight c3, queen h5, takes on c5, bishop c5, bishop g2, castles, castles. So we have this Catalan type of position where black has problems with two pieces, the light squared bishop and the knight on a6. So... I see problems here for, for black, especially as b4 will likely happen, and that will make it that takes away the c5 square, makes it even more difficult for black to get the knight back into the game. The light squared bishop may be a bit more lucky if white black goes e5 and then tries to develop it on the h3 c8 diagonal, but I don't think that's well that it, it's. It's tough, I think, because even if the e5, let's say, move like knight g5 opens the long diagonal. Oops, not that one. Okay, let's remove all the square uh, arrows. So e5, some move like let's say knight g5 opens the long diagonal and makes it more problematic for for black to move the bishop and that knight can come to e4, hitting the bishop. B4, as I said, is an important idea for white. So I would say that white has an initiative here. So strange that in so few a few minutes. Somehow the match shifted in, in favor of the Americans. Okay, I mean, still there's a lot to play and uh, long games ahead, but what looked kind of as a promising start now, it's not such a promising start for Team Alkali. So let's check the, uh, the, the, the match Italy against England. So after Bishop d3, so uh, David went... Let me just switch that one. David went along the lines of the Carlsen game. 
So bishop d3. Uh, a6 takes, but now instead of dc6 like Carson, he actually took bc6. I wonder what uh, what could have been the reason for not repeating, or just I'm pretty sure he didn't know about that game, and uh, he was as he was surprised, I expect, by this choice of knight cb5 and bishop d3. So he was just thinking on his own and just made a decision to take with the b pawn, but. Uh, Obviously, there should there was nothing wrong with taking with the other pawn. But then again, I'm not sure what uh, he had in mind. So maybe just after d takes c6, instead of knight d4 like Eric guys, he just simply knight c3, and if e5, let's say f4. And we have this type of position this is in the Khan variation, these, uh, let's say, symmetrical pawn structures, but f4 early on can give white the initiative, and uh, this may, may well be the case. So we have bc, we have bc, uh, knight d4, so I'm just checking something has been played here yeah quite a few games now c5 even though bishop b7 has been played so c5 knight f3 bishop b7 so knight f3 bishop b7 c4 actually is an interesting alternative here but again not that straightforward because well black is lagging back in development in playing like this with the king in the center well, queen d4 can happen, so looks risky, yeah? So bishop b7. Uh, so bishop b7, probably, it's just a novelty, I'm just checking, c4 has been played, but not bishop b7. And now e5. And already, well, looks e5. He played knight d5. So knight d5 and uh, queen e2, bishop e7, rook d1. Okay, so this appears to be quite good for white. I'm just checking here and it appears to be pretty good for white. Uh, mostly because of the pawn structure. Yeah, you see the, the, the d7 pawn is backward and if uh, black wants to get rid of it by playing d6, that will isolate the c5 pawn. Pawn a6 is already isolated. <coughs> Whereas white structure is very nice. So you go something like bishop e4, c4, and uh, then if black does not play d6, when the knight gets ejected from d5, then black has problems on the d5 with this backward pawn. So the opening surprise worked like a charm for Adams. Already quite a promising position. Uh, not only on the board but also on the clock because he has spent seven minutes by this point whereas david has spent what like more than 40. so very promising uh, position on board one for the english team let's see the nikp position that is no longer an nikp position so we were left off here with bishop d7 knight c3 was played by godena rook c8 takes on d5 ed5 so black actually allowed the transposition into another type of structure, which is a fixed center structure. And, well, basically hopes to hold, okay, queen b3 been played, queen b6, okay. Now taking on d5 is likely met by bishop b6 and then queen b2. And, uh, well, normally these positions are either just equal or slightly worse for one side and uh, okay sometimes can be a lot worse but this is not really the case i mean here if we just compare the pieces uh, the let's say the worst bishop which for white is the let me just remove the dark squared bishop because this pawn is another dark square is actually quite active <coughs> as opposed to black's worst bishop which is this one so this can 
uh, well, uh, let's say, say that white may be a bit better, but on the other hand, <coughs> this knight is attacking and this knight is defending, so <coughs> black has a somewhat better knight. Should be around equal, I think. And um, um, yeah, I mean, this can quickly fizzle out to a draw in case of some exchanges happening fast. And okay, I mean, just now I pay attention to the clock, and it may be, I, as I see, Ems actually having more time than what he started with, whereas Godena has spent like what 20, 50 minutes by now. It may just will be that this is just preparation for Ems all the way up to here. I mean, okay, I can actually check and, and just uh, and just see, yeah, because. Uh, let me check. Okay, I'll just put in the moves. So it takes takes d4, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6. <clears throat> I'm just curious whether this is really that deep preparation and whether this is really all theory. Let's see. So knight c3, queen d6, castles, bishop e7, knight b5, main move, <coughs> queen d8, bishop f4, knight d5, bishop g3, Carlsen has been, actually this is, they're following the game Carlsen Gukesh from the, uh, uh, from the uh, recently finished World Cup uh, in Baku where actually Gukesh was in a well actually put some pressure on, on Carlsen so uh, obviously MC has done his homework has done his homework so rook c1 uh, uh, bishop d7 knight c3 ah, okay and here he deviates so in this position okay this has been played in the in the Carlsen Gukesh game and here Gukesh played queen b6 Whereas the main move is rook c8, which has been played by Ms. So rook c8, knight d5 is the main move, e d5, queen b3, queen b6. So actually all theory. Okay. I didn't know this. And <laughs> then you would uh, ask the logical question, why is Godena spending more than 50 minutes to reach this position? But I have to explain that having known Godena for like, what, almost 30 years, <coughs> Uh, he's a time trouble addicted player. Uh, he he likes spending a lot of time and uh, almost inevitably ends up in time trouble in all of his games. So it's not a surprise for him to spend masses of time on uh, moves that he knows. And uh, yeah, it's just the way he, he plays. He has always been like this and uh, I don't think he, it will ever change. Now, just to to uh, 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 to tell you that theory continues. Queen takes b6, a b6, and now White has a choice: bishop f4, bishop b5, rook f d1, rook f e1, and even h3. But I have to also say that these games, except for one, which is Stevich Gupta played in February this year when bishop b5 was played, all the others that at least I have in my database, are all computer games. So actually quite a modern modern uh, preparation by, by John Ems in this game and likely he will successfully neutralize uh, Godena's white pieces. Let's move on to Fleer Ortega. Not much changed, I mean not much developed here so knight d7 short castle bishop e7 knight c1 knight b6 bishop d3 and c5 yeah so the game is following the the scenario i outlined uh, with the difference that black has not exchanged the light squared bishop so he has he now as c5 has been played he also has the option of keeping the light squared bishops and developing <coughs> his uh, own on b7 so <coughs> this will lead to more to sharper play because leaving white with a light squared bishop 
can give white some tactical chances on the king side uh, thanks to the bishop looking down the b1 h7 diagonal but also the bishop can be planted on b5 in some lines so the, the key characteristic in, in this position okay d takes e5 played by white <coughs> now if knight c5 bishop b5 check will happen most likely in bishop c5 knight b3 um so the, the the characteristic of this position is this uh, a, a far advanced queen side uh, pawns by by black which have left these weaknesses of the b5 square and the a5 pawn yeah especially when targeted with the knight on b3 so this gives white some long-term uh, ideas to play with but on the other hand black's position is solid and for the time being and probably for a long time he will be able to deal with this let's say defense on the a5 pawn so something small for white to play with in this game and let's check the board four the caro can and after a6 we saw knight bd2 knight e4 and now rook e1 okay generally useful move I suppose knight b3 was also possible and now b5 by Keith so as I mentioned it's uh, I did not expect a minority attack but well Keith likes to play the minority attack in the Kasba structures we saw it in round two yesterday no actually it was round one when he nicely maneuvered his pieces in a Kasba structure executing the minority attack and winning a very nice game and here he does it again okay but this weakens the c5 square so white goes a3 and now knight d2 knight d2 yeah the idea is that now the knight can come to c5 and f6 so this is black's idea likely he wants to expand with e5 uh, quite possible yeah uh, but I, I mean as long as that these pawns are well defended it's it's okay to play like this but they may turn out to be also a target for an attack uh, for example white will likely play knight b3 maybe put the knight on c5 but white will have to decide whether he takes on e5 or just keeps the pawn on d4 so this is something so probably that means that first he just retreats the bishop and in case of e5 then he decides whether to go knight b3 or take on e5 and then play either knight b3 or maybe knight f1 with the idea of knight e3 so uh, a choice of possible plans but on the surface it looks like black is doing okay but generally speaking the the match is going heavily in in, in favor of the english team because uh, on board one adams has already a, a commanding position against David and uh, Ems is likely going to draw with Godena Fleer Ortega is a long battle where where white has some some a little bit uh, happening on the queen side and here Arkel doesn't seem to have any obvious problems so the match seems to be going fine for the English team so okay we can we can have a short break here because we made a roundup of uh, both sections even twice in the s50 so we'll get a we'll make a short break in which i will just go back go down to the plane hall and check what's going on and uh, when we come back we'll continue with the analysis see you soon
Hello and welcome back to the live commentary of the third round of the FIDE World Senior Team Championship. We left off when the games were still uh, in progress, and uh, but in the meantime, some games have finished. And um, uh, okay, but we will take it on a game by game basis and uh, check the matches. Uh, one by one. So let's go to the board one of the match USA against the North Macedonia Alkaloid. Okay, we have some technical issues, but soon we will fix the board. And just a second. Yes, we noticed that the board is off screen, so we will we will do that now. We'll fix that. Uh, no, not yet. It's still out of bounds. So we're waiting for the technical thing to, to be fixed. okay now it's better yeah okay <clears throat> so uh, actually the game Georgiev Kaidano finished in a draw uh, as I was down in the playing hall it was apparent that this will finish in a draw because uh, well, let's go to the position where we left off which was uh, Queen C2 yeah and what actually happened in the game was that all the pawns on the Queen side were exchanged and we landed in a uh, and this also included uh, peace exchanges so everything was basically chopped off the board so black played h6 bishop h4 rook c8 threatening um, a discovered attack on the queen so a b5 a b5 queen d3 moving away from the attack and attacking b5 but now bishop c6 just covers the the pawn knight b3 bishop e7 knight d4 knight c5 uh, a nice uh, uh, simplifying uh, sequence by black uh, knight attacking the queen now knight c6 is a nice actually queen sacrifice by Georgiev but the problem is that black doesn't need to accept it because knight d3 knight e7 check king moves knight c8 hitting the queen and let's say rook c8 bishop d3 would be fantastic for white who has rook and two pieces for the queen but as i said it's not obligatory for black to take the queen he actually takes the knight and after queen b5 queen b5 bishop b5 rook b6 the problem is that uh, white cannot keep the uh, extra pawn alive for long knight d4 was played and now knight b3 is the key move very precise defense by kaidanov precisely calculating uh, that he manages to simplify the position and uh, secure a draw. So knight b3, bishop rook b5. The knight cannot stay on b3 because something like rook a3 is not possible. So the knight moves, rook b2, knight c6. And um, even though uh, it's uh, um, the result is still not fixed here yet, uh, I know that the game finished in a draw, so it was a well normal game i would say uh, where why didn't get anything out of the opening then he couldn't pose more serious problems and the game naturally uh, fizzled out to a draw but on the other boards we have some very interesting developments so the game elvis nedev we left off at bishop c5 and i mentioned this move f4 uh, before leaving off and uh, it's um, uh, uh, it's the move that LOS played. Uh, as I mentioned, the idea is to open files and diagonals against the black king still stuck in the center. So, for example, DC3 check, King H1, CB2, Bishop B2 would be tremendous and very dangerous for black. So, obviously, Nedev didn't play that. He played Knight E7 
and after if f takes e5 he played d3 check he didn't want to take on c3 again for the same reasons because uh, that opens diagonals and files so uh, and it's also the the pawn on the e5 and the queen and make it more problematic for black to liberate his <coughs> play with d6 so that's why he gave the d3 check this makes it more difficult for white to develop king h1 and now knight g6 and this was the position i saw when i was in the playing hall and here i immediately noticed the the move that actually elvest played which is the move e6 it's a very unpleasant move because uh, it stops black from castling because if allowed to castle and let's say even take knight e5 black would have a great position than d6 and what fantastic pieces on the dark squares uh, black would may even be better but the movie 6 is very un unpleasant because uh, obviously d6 is not possible because of the pin and f takes e6 <coughs> opens the f file and <coughs> that means that the king is still stuck in the center uh, so um uh, nedef is thinking in this position and i think after f6 i'm not sure maybe if if move like e5 is possible yeah just to stop knight e5 and if knight e5 then queen h5 check yeah and this wins a piece because uh something like knight g6 drops the bishop on c5 uh it's not necessary to play e5 but uh it's just an idea yeah so uh, black is thinking and i noticed that black actually spent a lot of time uh, by this point and uh, this is normally not how uh, Nedef uh, manages his time which indicates that he was not very happy uh, with his position and uh, just generally looking at it when white has this very dangerous initiative and uh, the serious time advantage it's um, obviously an unpleasant situation both for the player and the team uh, so we will see how uh, just a second i'm just seeing uh, some comments yeah i'm, I'm comment using the leeches platform to to comment uh okay then then you you guys are talking in chat just <laughs> it's fine yeah, you, if you have any questions about the stream or, or position just uh, okay occasionally i i check the chat so on board three bogdanovsky novikov we left off in this position when um uh, when Bogdanovsky was thinking here after Queen A2, I'm not sure. I will actually check the. Uh, he played C takes D5, which is the second most common move in this position. The other one being Rook. Rook. Uh, no, actually, he played Rook C1. Sorry, he played Rook C1. Queen A2, C D5. Okay, this is actually all played. And now the new move was e d5 because up to here black has taken on d5 either with the queen or with the knight, but e d5 is a new move. And uh, well, I can just quickly check uh, how good that is. Let's see if there are any actually a new move, but uh, it makes some sense, I would say, because it opens the the diagonal for the bishop and uh, that means that if black manages to, to finish his development uh, he will have a, a good play because of the free development yeah and, and an extra pawn uh, so ed5 uh, white played bishop b5 bishop b5 queen a5 oops i'm just checking here even though Queen a5 was not strictly necessary, bishop e7 was possible, but queen a5, then white took on c6, and then castle, okay, and this was the position I saw in the playing hall when white black was thinking, and honestly I wasn't sure what's going on, because on the surface it looks like uh, uh, black is solid and has an extra pawn. I won't even talk about the pair of bishops because they are not that important. But it, then, <laughs> upon deeper inspection, it appears that uh, thanks to the very strong control over the dark squares, 
let's say knight b3 uh, let's say knight d4 knight e5 yeah um, white has serious initiative here so black played bishop e7 here white played knight e5 knight b3 i guess was also possible bishop d7 and now again knight b3 knight d4 with positional compensation was possible but he decided to go for e4 and this already is a very very sharp position and uh, both players were spending a lot of time but bogdanovsky more than novikov so things will happen here quickly because we already have direct contact between the both armies and uh, uh, things are happening in the center so a lot of calculation is required so um, yeah this is this is going to be very uh, uh, critical and in a way reminds i mean it's similar to to what's happening on board two in the game elvest nedef when when one side has the initiative and the other one uh, is defending but here with the i mean uh, well in both games the white players have the initiative and the uh, black players need to defend on board four what happened is something strange but maybe not entirely unexpected okay we left off here and i mentioned the movie five that opens the uh, h3 c8 diagonal for the bishop and here instead of the move knight g5 that i i also mentioned uh, Yermolinsky played bishop g5, which is a thematic move in the Catalan. Uh, very often in the Catalan, because we do have a Catalan type of position here. Uh, the uh, dark square bishop is exchanged for a knight because this increases the control over the light squares in the center. And here, in order to avoid this, Stanoyevsky went knight g4. And after knight a4, went for this i would say well uh, you know the, in russian i think they say something like not because of life is good or something like this yeah so he sacrificed on f2 and after rook f2 knight f2 king f2 he went bishop d7 knight c3 rook e8 and bishop e3 and i i just think that this is just winning for white i don't see any proper compensation here for for black, rook and a pawn for two pieces, and uh, the main problem being that black still has problems with the knight. So the knight is still out of play. Not only he is lacking light pieces, having only two as opposed to white's four, but he that knight on a6 is still out of play. So I think this is just winning for. Uh, that's the impression I have. Should be somehow just uh, winning for. Uh, for white. And uh, to wrap up, uh, if things are, let's say, equal or balancing each other out on boards 2 and 3, with a draw on board 1, then on board 4, the Americans are, are uh, safely in the driving seat. And this, at this point at least, um, means that the match is, well, nicely turning out in their favor. So that's uh, the match on board one between Alkaloid, North Macedonia and USA. On board two, we have England against Italy and the uh, game items David. So uh, we left off somewhere here. D1. Um, Black played Queen C7 and C4. This is what I mentioned. C4, Bishop E4 is what White would play, <coughs> opening the D file and uh, um, just uh, pinpointing the problem that black has on the d file namely the backward d7 pawn knight b4 uh, hitting that bishop on d3 bishop e4 and now knight c6 the knight is rerouted to c6 <coughs> from where well obviously being the best position for the knight in this position as uh, it uh, attacks the pawn on e5 and controls the d4 square Bishop f4 is natural, defending the pawn, h6, h3, well, black doesn't really want to castle short because that may expose him to an attack, something like, uh, let's say, the knight maybe 
uh, Quincy 2 is an idea, h4, h5 is an idea, and so on. So David decides to play with king in the center, h6, h3. Maybe h4 made some sense too. Uh, to control g5 and maybe play h5 and fix g7, but Adams played h3, allowing g5, bishop g3 and h5. So again, I don't think this is... Uh, well, because black's position is so good and he's attacking, because he can't really support the attack with these pieces being where they are. The bishops are far away, the queen is far away, the knight is far away, so this advance on the king side is more like a, well, uh, as a result of lack of better options. Rook d3 by Adams, he prepares the doubling on the rooks. On the d file, it's quite likely that black will castle long at some point here. g4, hg, hg. Yeah. And now the knight is hanging, most likely it goes to d2, but going to h2 may also be an option. Uh, note that uh, that pawn on e5 is not really hanging after knight e5 because bishop b7 discovers the queen's attack on the knight and then the knight will be lost. So now Adams is thinking where to put the the knight. Uh, I have to say this looks very suspicious from Black's point of view, but that was already the case even after the opening. So here what we see is that uh, well, Black having a suspicious position after the opening tries to stir up some trouble and uh, well confuse his opponent. But confusing Michael Adams, well, that's good luck with that. Yeah. So let's move on to board two. We saw great preparation by John Ems, and we left off here queen b6 when Godena took on b6, a b6, and played rook fd1, one of the moves that I mentioned that has been played in this position. Uh, f6 by Ems, a useful move because it limits the mobility of the knight, so knight e5 is no longer possible, and also to a certain extent the mobility of the bishop by taking control of an important dark square h4, king f7, king f1, g6, and knight e1. Uh, okay, uh, obviously by the time spent it's clear that, uh, well, Ems also is on his own by now, and um, but the position remains really uh, equal and, and static, and like I said, okay, uh, I expect this to end in a draw, uh, unless some of the play, at least one player, I mean, so, so one player blunders, yeah, something big. But I don't expect that to happen, so this is really a stable and safe position for both sides. On board three, Fleer against Ortega. We left off after the move dc5, black recaptured with the knight, bishop b5, as I mentioned, bishop d7. And now white had to make a decision whether to allow black to take on b5 or take on d7 himself. And I'm not sure which is better, to be honest. I would be... I mean, in the game, uh, white played bishop e3, um, allowing black to take on b5. Uh, taking on d7 would have kept the structure as it is, but possibly uh, white was worried about the attack on the pawn on a4. And if white is forced to play b3, then things are not the same anymore, because now instead of having a knight on b3, which would be pressurizing black's king side, uh, sorry, queen side, now black has an unpleasant knight on c5 pressurizing white's queen side. So see how big a difference uh, a pawn or a knight on b3 can make. So I think this is the reason why White did not want to take on d7 and went bishop e3 instead. And after bishop takes b5, a takes b5, we have a serious transformation on the queen side because first and foremost the a file is open, so the rook is directly attacking the pawn on a5, but on the other hand, the pawn on b5 can become a weakness if white can uh, organize his, uh, if black can organize his pieces to attack it. But it's not so simple. Yeah, because, for example, putting a rook on b8 is not really possible because the pawn on a5 is hanging. So the game followed queen takes d1, rook takes d1, knight d5, going after the bishop. Now bishop takes c5, 
Uh, the idea of the exchange is to get rid of the knight on c5 that was controlling the b3 square. So after bishop takes c5, knight b3 can happen. So the knight finally arrives at the best square, but the bishop is also placed on b6 where it safely defends the pawn on a5. Also, uh, some ideas like a4 are all possible for black. And white plays knight fd2. Uh, the idea is to keep harassing black with knight c4, targeting the bishop and the d6 square. So, I think that white has certain initiative here uh, in view of that threat of knight c4. But in, the position has simplified to a certain extent and, uh, well, black does have a pretty untouchable knight on d5. So, I would say that in, well, some initiative for white, but not uh, well, not that great. Yeah, in in, in term of of uh, problems that it can pose. Though I have to admit that I'm I can't really see like after knight c4 what black can do because the knight also attacks the pawn on a5. So some problems to solve for Ortega, and it's worth noting that uh, he has only 15 minutes left for 20 moves. And uh, obviously with a 30 second increment and um, Ortega, well, okay, I've known him also like for over 30 years and uh, he's, uh, he's also uh, not a stranger to time trouble, but anyway, not probably not a very pleasant situation for him here. And on board four, we've had some big changes in the position. We saw the position after f6. White played the move I assumed he would, removing the bishop from the possible attack, bishop g3, e5. And now it was time to decide whether to take on e5 or not. Uh, White decided to take, d takes f5, e5, f takes e5, and now played the move a4, trying to undermine black's queenside. Um, Probably if black if white wanted to play knight b3, it was better to do so without taking on e5 because the pawn on d4 would have supported the knight on c5. But here maybe knight, I also mentioned the move knight f1, yeah, which uh, let's say with knight e3 going attacking that pawn on d4, maybe bishop f3 also attacking it and let's say provoking black to push e4 when white would obtain a, uh, control over the d4 square, something like this, yeah. But white went for a4, and after b4 played knight f1. And again, I'm not sure if this was uh, superior to playing knight f1 immediately, because after bc3, bc3, now this pawn is weak on c3. So exchanging that pawn b5 for the one on b2, if it's really in white's favor, I'm not so sure. Um, but Arkel does not allow uh, knight e3, he goes d4 himself. So ed4, cd4, rook c1, attacking the knight, queen d7, and bishop f3, attacking the knight again. Oops. Attacking the knight again. Uh, rook ac8, defending the knight and getting away from the pin. Yeah. Queen b3 check, and king h8. So it's a kind of a pretty sharp position in a, because the, a lot of pawns have been exchanged and uh, not so many pieces have been exchanged which means that we have uh, piece play in an open position and this normally means a lot of calculation and tactics uh, for example uh, i think what white's problem here is that the knight on f1 uh, is pretty restricted in in the mo in its movements for example uh, the, the only way back to the center is via d2, uh, going back. And black does have a pretty good and well defended passed pawn, which can't go, get far. It can go to d3, but then let's say a knight on d2 would blockade it. Uh, and as a compensation for this, uh, white has an extra pawn on the king side, which for now means a safer king, but. Uh, this is only theoretical because black's king also is pretty safe as there are a lot of pieces around it and white's pieces are pretty far to um, 
uh, cause any trouble. Queen b6 played, and it's a concrete move, but still attacking the knight and the pawn on a6. So white finds ways to cause some uh, concrete problems. And uh, if, he, if he manages to win the, the pawn on a6, then definitely white would be better, because then he would also obtain a passed pawn, yeah, that which he can push, especially with the support of the bishop on f3. So let's see uh, what black can play here. Um, moving the knight uh, leads to the loss of the pawn on a6. Uh, the knight can't go to b8 because then uh, rook c8 uh, is problematic. Let's see, rook c8. And now rook c8 is not possible because the knight is lost. Whereas queen c8 can be met by something like bishop b7, let's say. And then again bishop a6. Uh, so the knight can't go to b8. Uh, what else can... Hmm, black play um, it's probably worthwhile to note that black has this trick of bishop h3 and then gh3 would be met by rook f3 but for now it doesn't work because the uh, the knight is hanging so again this is the tactical point tactical moment that i mentioned that in a position in an open position where uh, where the pawns have been exchanged but uh, there are a lot of pieces on the board it's all about calculation and and uh, all sorts of tricks so something to think about for Keith. Uh, again, time advantage uh, here uh, for the English player. Uh, something similar to the uh, time advantage Fleer has against Ortega. Uh, 15 minutes left for uh, for Borgo, but for 15, 16 moves uh, to reach move 40. So again, some time trouble, and this can be important, especially if the position remains as complex as it is with a lot of uh, pieces on the board. So we will see here uh, how Keith tries to solve his problems. So generally speaking, uh, the match seems to be going somewhat uh, in favor of the English team, unless this is a very bad position for, for black for some reason. Yeah, For now, okay, I, I can't say I can see a move for uh, uh, black, maybe rook f6, but that looks a bit strange. So maybe there are some problems here for for black to solve. And maybe he will have to, to give up the pawn somehow and use his passed pawn, the tricks based on bishop h3, to uh, create some sort of compensation. So as the, uh, uh, wrapping up the uh, the first two boards in the S50 section, uh, on board one, the Americans uh, have a really good situation in the match, and on board two, it seems that the English have a somewhat better situation, uh, but not to the extent of the Americans, at least. That's how it looks to me. Let's now move to the S50. 65 section Illich against Knack we have a pretty complex yeah typical IQP position and the, it seems that the game followed the scenario that I outlined which was uh, solid maneuvering around the IQP white has absolute control and blockade of the IQP but black has good play on the light squares so we see here black has planted the knight on c4, which is dominating the bishop by attacking the pawn on b2. Whereas, okay, white doubled the, the rooks and it's obviously very safe. Uh, but, uh, well, I'm pretty sure white would be happy with the draw here, but it's not clear whether black would continue to press or try to extract something of his activity. So knight e5. Here and now, okay, rook must go to d2, and then knight c4 may lead to a repetition, for example. Yeah, it just depends whether, okay, rook d2, let's just see, stay here for a while, and let's see if black wants to repeat or not. 
uh, maybe 94 okay rook e d8 so black doesn't want to repeat okay so he will try to <coughs> to extract something more from his activity okay so black is trying to to play for more here board two okay we mentioned meister against kralevsky and uh, we see that kralevsky so far has resisted his urge to lash out he played solid chess exchanged rooks and this is likely a drawn uh, well i say equal position because okay drawn is a bit early to say but uh, okay white still hasn't managed to activate his bishops but it can be a long game uh, in any case it would be white who would, who would be trying for more so on, on the first boards it's the germans who are trying for more board three uh, okay we had a position where white was a pawn up and white is still a pawn up that queen from h4 somehow made it to a3 and uh, it's a mess <laughs> uh, and usually mess favors the side with less material um, the immediate problem that white is facing is the attack on the pawn on c5 <coughs> Can be defended by bishop b4 but there are also some maybe some issues on the king side something like g5 and uh, so i would say uh, from where we started it appears that uh, black managed to to create some counterplay and compensation what's notable though is that for the 15 minutes left until the time control black has only 16 minutes on his clock whereas white has over 40. so white he is a pawn up and he has time advantage but he's on the defensive as uh, black has threats like g5 or simply bishop uh, c5 this will be sharp and likely will be decided in time trouble and on board four okay this is game over white is going to win uh, just there is no stopping pawn the, the pawns okay so that badly played opening by by black he couldn't get out of the problems he created for himself and uh, this is a win for germany so it's likely that uh, germany will win this match they're pressing on the first two boards they have compensation on the third and they are winning on fourth so uh, it's likely that Germany will maintain their 100% score. Uh, the match England and Slovakia, uh, we saw that there were draws on boards one and two. On board three, we had this Fianchetto Kings Indian where uh, we had this position after 94, 94 bishop e4. And I mentioned that the, the main idea for white is to put the knight on e6. And this is what happened knight f5, knight e6. Queen e8. Uh, for now, the knight cannot move from e6 because the bishop is hanging. But after rook e1, now there is already a threat to move the knight. So bishop e6, d6. Queen e6, of course, would be just bad. So black played king h8. And white now plays bishop d2. Uh, White finds the time or decides that he has the time to finish development. For example, he, I guess he could have gone after the pawn. Uh, but he goes bishop d2, bishop b2, rook b1. So, and probably the idea is that he will uh, take on b7 with the rook and activate the rook. So a very sharp position where... Uh, White has the pair of bishops and a dangerous pawn on e6. Whereas black uh, will likely hope on the some solidity in his position. For example, the knight on f5 is pretty solid and the bishop is good on the long diagonal. So, uh, okay, bishop e5. Now both <coughs> light pieces are pretty solid on, uh, on the central squares. And with neither king being entirely safe 
for now they are but uh, they can be exposed for example let's say uh, already these two pieces are targeting g3 square this is sharp and and, and uh, with chances for both sides i would say and on board four uh, we have here um, well i would say an equal end game equal material and uh, well mm, i think both sides are fine here black is pretty active with the knights okay they control a lot of squares and white can try to bring the king to the center and maybe chase away the knight from c2 black will likely do the same whether with f6 or king f8 king e7 king d6 and um, i think in spite of the the uh, pawns being on both sides of the board white i don't think white can really take advantage of the bishop because this these two pawns on b7 and c6 effectively uh, limit its mobility so i expect this okay e5 by by uh, white opening the bishop but i just think that this after something like let's say king f8 king e7 f6 will just lead to more simplifications so this is likely a draw and that means that the match between England and Slovakia will be decided on board 3 in that sharp King's Indian position. So as things stand now in the S65 section, uh, Germany is, will likely win the match against North Macedonia and the game and the match England against Slovakia uh, is hanging by a thread and I expect to be um, decided on board three in the game Chapman against lunch okay so let's go back to the S um, 50 section and the match between Al Khalid North Macedonia and USA board one was drawn let's go to board two and we've seen some massive changes here what happened so after e6 f takes e6 was played white took queen d3 b5 bishop c2 and queen h4 so this likely means that black will remain with the king in the center and he's banking on active play with his pieces so queen h4 knight d2 knight is on its way to f3 knight e5 with tempo queen e2 knight g4 threatening mate now g3 uh, also threatening knight f2 so nedef is stirring up some fast uh, counterplay with his pieces uh, he's a pawn down it has to be noted but the activity seems to be quite uh, serious at least for now so g3 queen h3 rook f4 attacking the knight h5 defending the knight and now e5 the idea is to trap the queen like this bishop e4 bishop g2 but it's likely that these bishops will be exchanged after bishop e7 check bishop e4 but even in that case the queen may not be entirely out of danger because just let me show you bishop b7 check bishop e4 bishop e4 knight e4 there is the threat of knight g5 trapping the queen even though yeah well knight f2 will likely happen but uh, it's still uh, not enough by black will lose material so a sharp position and uh, unless there is something concrete then it can be a uh, a problem for black still has less time but uh, not that much as earlier uh, the times that are shown here is that um, white has 23 minutes left after e5 so for that's for 21 moves and black has 17 and still thinking so this is very 
uh, very sharp and uh, well but uh, it has to be said that uh, Nedef really thrives in, in sharp positions so mm, this is a development even if not let's say entirely correct or entirely uh, sound uh, this is a development that uh, he would like so sometimes the subjective feeling is more important than the objective evaluation of a position so uh, like I said even if it's not uh, the best position that he has the development of this piece activity and, and possibilities to attack will be to his liking so pretty sharp stuff here um, okay I just want to see what's going on here okay this is okay just to see if there are some comments just a second arc is, is in trouble okay if you're looking at an engine then i tend to okay fragrance enthusiast plus three after queen b6 okay well uh i'm not looking at the engine so i'm just basing my my what i say on on feeling but uh, if it's plus three i wouldn't argue with plus three yeah so that's not good news for the uh, english team then um, so let's move on board three after e4 black plate queen d8 knight d7 queen d7 e5 94 94 d4 queen a4 castles queen e4 so black white managed to get the pawn back uh, and black managed to get his king to safety so rook fd8 bishop e3 queen e6 rook c4 rook d5 f4 f6 so for the time being things are happening in the center and on the king side but don't forget this past pawn don't forget the past pawn um and the fact that uh, the c5 pawn can be weak in an end game because it's on a dark square and black is attacking it so what happens is that uh, uh, white here okay must play let's say dynamically because if just is allowed to uh, black is allowed to stabilize the position maybe exchange queens like it can happen now so e takes f6 mm. then uh, the, the c5 pawn can be a weakness and the a passed pawn can be a serious trump in uh, for for black so let's stay for a while here and see what novikov will play against he takes f6 after he takes f e f6 is move 23 which means that we have 17 moves until move 40 and bogdanovsky has only 12 minutes left unfortunately he's a lifelong uh, time trouble addict and he has been known to play on seconds for like more than 20 moves but uh, if that worked when he was younger and when he was sharper in his calculations and had more energy with age uh, this tends to work against the player but here it may not matter so much especially if it's an end game but if it's an end game that it may be kind of an unpleasant end game okay depending how it pans out because white may also not be that badly off for example if he manages to put something like rook on a5 defending c5 and attacking a7 but whether that's possible it's not so, well doesn't look to be possible because let's say if the bishop after exchange of queens if bishop takes they will control a1 but in that case for example rook on e4 can come to e6 and attack uh, c6 so it's very very concrete and now black needs to make a decision whether to keep the queens on board with queen f6 or exchange queens so uh, well it's a decision he actually should have made when playing f6 so uh, now it, i would expect black to to play faster but okay probably still still thinking what to do uh, well i mean f from black's perspective i would definitely go for the end game as the long-term uh, factors are in black's favor weak c5 past pawn a 
on a7 but chess is a concrete game so but okay we can we can make moves unlike the players in the playing hall bishop f6 yeah and now maybe rook e6 I'm targeting that pawn okay probably rook c8 just defend and now what uh, rook a1 is not possible but maybe rook b1 is possible and rook b7 okay some activity certainly for for black oh, so, sorry for white in this position uh, the rooks are active but uh, king f7 maybe rook d6 so it's not clear cut far from it but it's clear that what's clear is that white must play dynamically and seek activity because if black stabilizes the position then it will be even more maybe winning for black so still well black's thinking the alternative is to take queen f6 and this has the, the advantage of keeping the bishop targeting the, the c5 pawn and um, not allowing this activation of the rooks and now a5 uh, is is a threat so let's see what what Novikov will come up with still strange that he's thinking for so long but okay in the meantime let's check board 4 what happened here uh, so we had the rook a e8 bishop e3 this was the position so bishop c6 b4 threatening b5 f5 okay b5 bishop f3 most likely yeah, b5 bishop f3 e takes f3 uh, because bishop f3 would be met by queen h2 check yeah and then some some complications like this so he takes f3 knight c7 knight goes back to the game bishop a7 now queen h2 is not possible because it traps the queen rook h1 traps the queen so knight e6 king g1 getting the king back to safety king h8 queen f2 rook c8 yeah this should be winning for uh for white who uh now even has a material advantage uh, to pieces for the rook and but most importantly this queen side majority will easily decide the game just by pushing and black's only chance here is to try to complicate matters but again it's not clear how he can do that because white has a lot of pieces around the king and a lot of yeah pieces more pieces generally yeah, because he has two against one two light pieces against the rook 95 natural move getting away from the attack so this this is winning for for white so uh, let's go quickly back to the first two the boards two and three let's say what happened here okay if i g5 <coughs> by by black so things are getting pretty sharp here things are getting pretty sharp g5 uh, 17 minutes left for white 15 minutes left for black and honestly anything can happen here knowing native uh, really anything can happen here uh, when he has this uh, possibility to attack the king he's at his most dangerous so um, elvis will have to do a lot of calculating here in this position so really sharp and let's see board three what did Novikov decide? Okay, he took with a queen on f6. So he's, he probably checked that in the endgame white is too active and took with a queen. White played h3. Generally useful move, but not doing much uh, to for activation of the pieces as of just now. Yeah. So just preparation for maybe f5 will happen. Maybe the rook will move. We will see. But for now, just improving a little bit the position of the king by opening a luft okay so the match is really pretty tight mm, americans are winning on board four anything can happen on board two and on board three it should be around uh, well long-term black should be better but for now these long-term factors are not uh, showing themselves so 
and, and also uh, white is short term time in this position so again mm, slightly I would just looking at the, the match situation I would say slightly better for the Americans let's go to the match England Italy so after hg Adams went knight h2 basically winning the pawn on g4 knight d4 queen g4 yeah and long castle okay so black is as we said it was a tricky position for him out of the opening so he's turning up trouble and so far well it doesn't look that bad so rook e1 rook d g8 bishop b7 check queen b7 queen e4 forcing the exchange of queens because if the queen moves there are some nasty things with queen a8 so queen e4 rook e4 and rook h5 so pawn up for for white but uh, the uh, uh, the knight is pretty dominant on d4 for now well the natural way to dislodge it would be by playing knight f3 but black is actually preparing to go rook h8 and threaten mate on h1 and uh, by doubling okay bishop f4 for um white um maybe the idea is to go g3 we will see or g4 so what happens here is that uh, if white consolidates he will have a winning position thanks to the extra pawn but black is still trying to do something with with activity especially doubling the rooks on the h file um, another factor in this position is that for 13 remaining moves for black he has only six minutes whereas adams has more than half an hour so pawn up time advantage and black only has some activity to 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 um, come up with at least to compensate so Godena M's, well, nothing much has happened. Like I said, I'm, I'm expecting some simplifications here. A3 has been played. Now one pair of rooks can be exchanged, rook c1, and then the knight can come back to c6. Um, again, it's a slowly developing game and... Uh, but then okay maybe maybe there are some issues okay let's, let's just say rook c1 rook c1 knight c6 and now but okay d4 is hanging so i, I was thinking bishop c7 but d4 is hanging so now nah, this should be should be moving towards the draw Fleer against ortega okay we have had some simplifications here and it seems that after knight fd2 black managed to solve the problems after knight c4 so king d7 he played and after knight c4 rook h b8 so what happened was that actually he managed to counter attack the b5 pawn as a way to uh, balance the attack on the a5 pawn so knight b6 rook b6 knight a5 rook b5 yeah knight c4 take take rook c5 b3 rook c7 okay this is obviously a draw as black is really uh, untouchable knight that covers everything so this is really a draw so good good defense by by ortega only one minute left by this point yeah so but he managed to to get stay out of trouble and as i was informed in chat arkel was losing after queen b6 plus three by the computer so he came up with 97 rook c8 rook c8 bishop b7 rook e8 and bishop a6 so white won a pawn threatens bishop b5 um, and uh, yeah well uh, who is there in this world who can argue with the engine's evaluation what happened is that okay with the exchanges and uh, Black did not increase the activity of his pieces, and in fact, he's even more tied up now, both thanks on the on the a4 e8 diagonal and also on the e file. So really, some serious problems for for Black here. So the match is actually uh, with two draws on both 
two and three and the winning position for Italy on board four that means that Adams is under pressure to win against David to tie the match so it's really uh, uh, but if we are to compare I would say that Borgo is more winning than Adams is winning against David but okay we will see so let's make another quick roundup of the S65 section and then we'll have a short break so uh, let's see uh, Illich Knack Rook E8 Rook E2 Knight C4 Rook E1 Bishop G7 Knight G4 Knight G4 Queen C8 um, maybe okay black was probably reluctant to go Knight Bishop D4 C D4 because H6 is hanging but uh, uh, not this one but this so but theoretically this is actually a good exchange for for black because it leaves him with a good knight against the best bad bishop but probably he saw some some issues here okay maybe rook e8 check and some activity by white so he went queen c8 f3 rook f8 okay that's probably too deep rook f8 queen f2 so this was probably the last chance to take on d4 takes takes and now maybe king g7 or king h7 something yeah but maybe he didn't like some i don't know rook e7 or bishop f4 okay one way or another he went to rook f8 and the queen f2 rook d8 but now white is fine i guess because he can always take with okay queen h4 he can no longer take on h4, d4 with a queen but he counter attacks the h6 pawn here yeah? so that's why now black cannot take on d4 so some strange maneuvering by by black he seemed to have some concentration of pieces in the in the center and now somehow he decentralized them by undoubling the rooks and sending the rook back to f8 queen back to c8 now rook e8 okay so what's the idea here okay so maybe some tactics based on bishop d4 and um, the pawn on b2 maybe hanging so let's say bishop h6 maybe knight b2 but this can maybe lead to a perpetual like this yeah this yeah, check and check and perpetual check okay i mean i'm just so i mean inclined that okay this was an equal position so i'm looking for ways to to make a draw just like an engine does if the engine sees zero 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 it will always you'll find some line that leads to some weird perpetual or a repetition but we will see so on board two the end game goes on but white makes some progress with b4 and maybe this is something black blundered with its last move b6 which weakened the c6 pawn because now b4 is unpleasant as okay a b c b bishop before queen c6 and this is not something black would like because uh, the position is opened and the bishops are beginning to gain in force and if black does not take moves the bishop somewhere then B A B A also creates some weaknesses in Black's camp, and then these can be used by White like this, maybe Queen C4 and so on. So maybe it's sl some slight blunder for Black with B6. So White definitely improved here. Yeah, uh, in this end game achieved progress. Stoshevsky Kalinchev the mess goes on so what happened was that after rook c8 white played b4 to defend the pawn a b a b now if bishop c5 b4 so g5 as expected to stir up trouble on the king side bishop g4 h g4 and h5 this is a nice nice because even though that pawn will likely be lost uh, white does not allow the knight to be activated via g5 by exchanging on g5 so knight f6 h6 bishop d7 b4 bishop h6 b5 so yeah white actually good transformation for white he managed to stabilize the position on the king side so there is no danger now 
uh, even though he was forced to return the, the pawn. Uh, but his, his pawn uh, majority on the queen side is actually quite uh, serious. So bishop f1, bishop f8, pinning the pawn on c5, queen a1, knight d5. Yeah, so there is this problems on the diagonal, knight d5, c6, bc, bc, bishop e8, knight f5, and f6. So, why did better than expected? And um, But the position remains unclear. Um, because in spite of having this progress with the pawn being so far, white's pieces are not that, like, especially the bishop and the knight are not uh, in the game to support it. Of course, the knight can come back to d4 and defend the pawn, but white needs to find a way to activate the bishop and the knight. Still anything can happen here. Uh, only four moves until the control. Still a lot of time for both players, so no time travel here. But anything can happen. Yeah? And on board four, I'm pretty sure the game finished by now. Okay, we don't have the result, but it's still winning. So that one is uh, won by by uh, by white. And moving on to the match England Slovakia, we said that things will happen on board three. <clears throat> and what has happened here is that. For some reason white exchanged his light squared bishop for the knight. So after rook b7, queen e6, he took on f5. Ah, okay, I see, because the, the threat was knight g3, followed by queen h3 check. But I would have been still very reluctant to exchange that bishop. I mean, if there is a way to keep it, I would, but maybe there isn't, because also c4 is hanging. So... But after bishop f5, I think black is absolutely fine. Queen f5, rook c7, rook c8. Yeah, this is just no problem for black whatsoever. Maybe he black even be better here. Because the bishop is, is better. It's very solid in the center. Much better than the bishop on d2. So things turn around here. Yeah, I was expecting white to be able to do something more. But black's active defense was quite to the point. So rook a7, rook c4 will happen. And this may easily also be out to a draw as on board four, but here something has okay, things have happened, but probably just some mass simplifications. Takes on b7, takes on a3, takes on c6, yeah. And then three against three and one wing is just uh, a draw. So this should still be a draw. So maybe just the match will finish in a draw, and the Germans, as they are on their way to win the match, they will be the ones to lead the tournament okay before the the game start finishing uh, we'll have a short break and uh, we'll be back uh, quickly see you soon
né? Hi and welcome back. This was a really short break because in the meantime we have uh, one game that finished, and in fact that was a spectacular win for Nedef against Elvest. And you remember that I said that when Trico has uh, an attack on the king, he can be really unstoppable. And in fact he won a miniature. And here we have Nedef with us, and he will take us uh, over the game in his own words. So. I think the first interesting moment was after f4 when he spent a lot of time. So, as he said, he was not sure uh, whether he was going to go knight f6 mm -hmm. or knight e7. So, uh, you went knight e7 and I think this is kind of uh, positionally okay because you want to establish control yeah. over the dark squares, yeah? I tried to calculate what is different with bishop c4 and bishop a4 because it's the main yeah. line, bishop yes, uh, yes. go and c4. And here bishop e4. His uh, problem is because he have queen g4 in same line. I don't have d5 move. Aha, okay, okay, this is important. And, and knight f6, I calculating... Uh, okay, knight f6. Take on f5. f5. Yes. I must give check d3. d3 yes. okay. king, king h1, h1. knight d4. Knight and now queen g4, g4. And after that, I don't find a very... So the problem is this, yeah. yeah. It's difficult because after knight f2, knight f2 rook take on f2, take bishop take. f2, queen g7. Rook f8, bishop a6, and after knight e2, knight e4, it's, uh, I think is losing for black. Yeah, this looks very, very, very yeah. dangerous. Bishop yeah. c5, I must play knight d2, I don't find what to do. Because after b5, knight e4. Yeah, even and, yeah. Yeah, and, and the threat is and yeah, knight, knight f5 and knight f6 and, knight f6 six and everything. Yeah. Something, yeah, and something. after that, I start to calculate queen e7 move. But after also, e4, yeah? Yeah, but also it's not so good because take on e5. Okay. And queen a5. And now bishop f4. Okay. And I don't like this too much because after queen e7, for example, queen e7 on take on d4. So I yes. must take first on, on maybe c3 or d3. d3. Yeah, queen e7 is uh, easily. No, no, this does look too good. Not yeah. good for black. Knight e7 is only move. Okay. Knight e7 and here okay. take on e5. Yeah, knight g6, I must do d3, king h1, and knight g6, because bishop g5, I don't want to give okay. bishop g5 to pin the knight, but now uh, knight e7. Yeah, he played e6. e6, I see, in the, but I don't sure that e6 is the good move here. It looks inter it looked interesting because it stops you from casting, mm. Yeah, but it but, gives you time. Yeah, it gave me time, but uh, king, uh, white king is more or less uh -huh. uh, weakness. So, okay, queen d3, queen h b5, okay, yeah, first, bishop, bishop, bishop. and queen h4. And now queen he start the attack, yeah? Yeah, because knight five is the coming. next move, yeah. And also he don't have bishop e3 because loses immediately in knight e5. And, yeah, bishop e3. And, and take on e3. And take on h2. Yeah. And queen h2, yeah. Yeah, so this is the... Take queen e3, yes, queen, queen h2, h2, and knight, knight g4, and everything is... Yeah, everything is falling, yeah. Yeah, force line. Yeah, okay, this is just... Mm. Very and bad. next, I don't see how to play with white here. So he I, I think that knight 2 is only move. Knight e5, okay. queen e2, knight g4, knight g3 to stop knight f2. I don't sure how I win, but after knight f3. Okay, but you take the exchange, no? Take king h1. King g1. And that king oh, g1. This is strange, actually. Okay. If I play knight e4, he yes. have bishop e3 and I'm, I'm high, I lose peace. Yeah, the queen is king, this is yeah. king, yeah, everything is king. I must to, to give the perpetual, perpetual check, but I don't sure, maybe it's better for me to not give the check. Here? Yeah, maybe to play something like queen, queen, h5. queen h5, but uh, this is the variation that uh, he must play. Uh -huh. Because he is not easy, e5 maybe, and bishop e4 next. Yeah, if he manages to develop like yeah. this, then it's fine for him, yeah? Yeah. But I, I try to play castles now, he don't yeah. like to give me the castle, castle rook f3. GF3 uh -huh. is something. Yes, bishop b7. Bishop b7. Yeah. Maybe by calculating knight f3, I must put to play queen h5. And after uh -huh. move. Maybe not e5, maybe just develop bishop f4, bishop g3. Bishop f4, maybe. Yeah. Just solidify the uh, castle. Quick castles. Go back. Bishop g3. But knight e3. Knight e3. Yeah. It's not easy. I take the two bishops and. But also rook f3 can now. Happen, yeah. I mean, okay, here, well, take on two. Uh, bishop b7 is this easily advantage for white yeah. for black, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just bishops, yeah. it looks very rook good. f3 is um, yes. maybe more or less threatening, 
But he play? What he play? Play G3 and this is like... G3, yeah. G3 can actually... Yeah, he, he is losing totally. Rook F4. Yeah, Rook F4 is the only move to not lose immediately yeah, because so he wants to play. Yeah, five defending the yeah. knight. Yeah, but n now he has no time to trap your queen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he don't have the time. Yeah. I calculating here maybe to, it's better for him to play before something before. like that. Yeah, before and bishop. How was the difference? D6 I see here. And if you just keep the bishop on the same, what's the Queen difference? Queen uh, now, what he have something like c4 in some moment, I'm not sure. But bishop d4, it's just... And then g5. Knight f3 in some moment, and knight ah, g5. Ah, knight g5, uh -huh. Uh -huh. that kind of tricks. I think it's black is winning, but uh, for the, in the game we have... Uh, yeah, e5... Problem with time. Uh, we, bought, yes. we bought calculating too much and... You end up in the trouble. Mm, yeah, we have time trouble. Okay, g5 was g5 nice. is okay, g5 and after g5, I, I think that uh, rook d4 is only move to, to continue the game, but uh -huh. uh, take, um, take, take, h5, h4, yeah, h4, yeah, h4 is yeah. nothing. No, knight d4, but take, no, no, take, no, on take, take on g3. No, it's Maybe queen g2, queen g3, but this is losing. Yeah. But knight e3 just wins, yeah? Yeah, knight e3 is also winning, yeah. yeah. Um, what to do, he play? He played rook f3, rook f3 with yeah. idea knight f1, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's too, it's, uh, here is in some lines is very good mate threat and, and what to do? I, t I want to take on g3. Yeah, take on g3 and h2. Knight f1 I think is losing. And h2 is... Knight f4 is next move, but okay, bishop b7. Does it go back, yeah? No, no, bishop b7. Ah, b7. And okay, and then losing. catastrophe in the long yeah, run. Next right? move is... Take on g3 and mate on h2. Yeah, yeah, that's just not going to what survive. What I calculating maybe to play first bishop g6. Ah, check. Yeah, king d8, yes. knight e4. Okay. Bishop b7, bishop okay. g5, uh -huh. queen c7, uh, king c7, c7, and also like threatening rook g8 and it's losing. No, no, this is not impossible mm. to survive with all this thing. Or, uh, yeah, or I see this that is winning. Yeah. If if he play bishop h4, I took on h4 with rook. Yeah, yeah of course. Just... And, and bishop f4 next. Bishop yeah. f4. And I, I think here is also. Why well, here? Well, knight h2 can have like. Oh, no, no, no. Queen is threatening. No. Ah, sorry, queen is king. Yeah, no, yeah. no, back one move. Bishop h4, what I see here. Um, okay, rook g8 is very easily. Rook g8. Yeah. Rook g8. Uh, bishop is very. Yeah, well, it's stupid. Bishop, yeah. Yeah. I think no, this must can't be winning here. Must be winning, must be winning. Yeah, I mean, this is just too much. And what he played? He played knight f1. And knight f1 and I take. Uh, take bishop f4, bishop g5 and queen h5. Yeah. Yeah. I see that rook g8 is also moved, but queen h5 is clear because knight f2 in some line. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And because if you play before. rook g3, I have okay. knight f2. Ah, you win the queen, yeah. Yeah, knight f2. And nothing for bishop g6, uh, bishop g6 king f8. Yeah. And he don't took with rook, he took with... Okay, played bishop f4, bishop f4 and knight h2. Yeah, yeah. I see here rook f8, but uh, uh -huh. king f8 is nothing. Yeah, no, just... Uh, that's just it, one yeah. move more, queen h5, rook f5. No, but that's... Okay. And I threatening knight f1. Yeah, and if he takes the rook... Knight, knight f1 and... Knight f1 and... And I have rook h5 and I have... To yeah, yeah, just too much... Too much... Yeah, maybe material. this or this or whatever, yeah. yeah. Just queening. Uh, it's easy to take on g5, not think. Yeah. Okay, but then check and bishop f2, yeah? We have two bishops. Mm. Yeah, b uh, peace up, yeah? yeah? Peace up, yeah. Yeah, okay, wow, this was great, yeah? Uh, just fantastic, fantastic victory. One of your, like your best days, yeah? <laughs> 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 like your best days. And, uh, okay, fantastic uh, victory for, for Team Alkaloid. And, uh, in fact, they had a really great chance to wrap up the match on board four when, uh, as we said, uh, Ermolinski was winning against Stanoyevsky, but he committed a huge blunder, which unfortunately Stanoyevsky didn't take advantage of. And, uh, okay, we'll look at that shortly. Okay, Trakos, thanks for being yeah. with us. Congratulations yeah, also. Once, once more. And, well, I hope to see you again after another one. Nice yeah. yeah, that thank will be good, yeah? Okay. So, yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, I wanted to show you what happened in the game uh, ermolinski Stanoyevsky because uh, what happened was that we saw this position after knight d5, f4, g4, queen f7, rook e1, knight g5, knight b6, rook c3. And here, Yermolensky committed a huge blunder by playing h4. 
And here after spending, let me see how much time he spent here. He spent, just a second, I want to see. Okay, this is like two and a half minutes. So he was thinking for two and a half minutes and he missed rook f3. And it's winning for black. All of a sudden it's winning for f. Obviously the point being this. Amazing, it, and it would have won the match for, for Alkaloid because it would have been the second victory in the match and uh, it would have just uh, won the match in, against the main favorites, so it would have been a fantastic result. Instead, Stanoyevsky went for rook a3 and he was again lost. hg5, rook a7, knight d7, queen c5, knight e5, okay, and still uh, it's a winning position for, for white again. So this will likely end in a white win, as it should have without that mishap. So really, really a big mischance for Alkaloid. And on board 3, we have more or less an equal endgame. So we saw that after Queen f6, h3, black played to consolidate his position with Queen f7, Bishop f8, Rook d8, Rook d7. But white also consolidated the position King h2, Rook e7, King, Queen c2 exchanges of the rooks and exchange of the other rooks but now I mean, even though this should be equal I see some potential danger here for white because for example if the queens are exchanged then it's probably losing for white because the king just comes to d5 the pawn on c5 is lost and the a pawn will decide so what white must keep the queens on the board and uh, he should be fine but his bishop is limited by that pawn on c5 and um, uh, white needs to keep an eye both on the defense of that pawn on c5 and on the past on the past a pawn what helps him here is that uh, black king is not entirely safe so there will always be some sort of uh, uh, perpetual or threat of checks when uh, white which should keep white out of danger but it's still white who needs to be a bit more careful uh, about the situation so the, the match is uh, panning out to be that uh, uh, Team USA will uh, equalize the score by winning on board 4 and then board 3 will likely be a draw but uh, Novikov will try to perhaps squeeze something out of the position. So let's go on to check Adams against David. We left off after Bishop f4, Black played doubled on the h file as expected and g4 was played by Adams this was the idea of moving the bishop from in front of the g pawn rook h7 king g2 so seems that just white is too solid for black to have anything here so bishop g5 knight f3 just exchanging uh, light pieces take on f4 now knight c6 black decides to keep the knight but uh, especially as likely knight f3 Rook d f3 would have left led to uh, problems with on f7. So knight c6 now rook d1, preventing possible activation by rook h1 and maybe rook swings to the queen side. King c7 rook e4, knight e7 rook f4, knight g6 rook f6 and king d8. Okay, some toing and throwing a little bit. Uh, it's still difficult to make something um, from that uh, extra pawn. Uh, because for now white cannot create a passed pawn and black is still somewhat active okay on the king side uh, for example the rook will stay on f6 to cover the f4 square okay did, there were some moves played very fast here so uh, okay king d8 knight g5 was played okay this is concrete if it works attacking the pawn on f7 rook h2 and king g3 so um this is very concrete because uh, there are a lot of things happening. For example, knight f7 is a threat now, but if it's not a check, then knight f7 is not a threat because rook 8 h3 would be mate. So, um, still black needs to fend off this check, yeah? Maybe move the king, but then rook f7 maybe is possible. 
and then d7 will hang but then knight e5 can be possible for for black so it's very calculational and uh, david is playing on his last seconds he has three moves to make with his last sec seconds on the clock so we can expect moves coming here faster so king e8 was played okay adam still has 12 minutes for for two moves so uh, it should still uh it's more than enough obviously king e8 now things need to be calculated though yeah here uh, so rook f7 knight e5 and if not rook f7 then knight e5 well the pawn on e5 is still hanging for uh, for uh for white so the question here is how to uh defend it So, okay, Adams will likely think for a, for some time here. And let's check also board four, where Borgo was winning, but it doesn't seem winning anymore. So what happened here after bishop a6 was that... Aha, so Arkel relied on this trick because now queen bishop b5, which I thought was the main threat, Black can actually go queen before attacking the rook on e1 and pinning the bishop. So, because the queen is not defended, so it, what happened? Let's take bishop e5, bishop d7, takes takes, rook c1. Yeah, well, it just appears that this fizzled out. Borgo misplayed it. Knight c3, bishop c4, rook c4, queen c4, queen d7, king f8. The threat is knight e2, so there is no time to take on h7. So rook a1, queen f7, queen d6. It's okay, maybe just... Uh, uh, well, just misplayed it badly, yeah? So... Yeah, great game by, by Nedef, if that's the one you're referring to, Fragrance Enthusiast. And... Uh, so yeah, if, if Arkel saves the game and Adams wins, then... Uh, the English team will win the match. Okay. So okay, well some as always a lot of things changing in time trouble. Yeah. Okay, let's check the S65 section. I'll move on to S65. And here uh, let's go to Illich Knack. Oh well things have changed and white won a pawn even. And this is surprising, but let's see what happened. We left off at queen h4, and black played rook d e8, bishop h6, rook e2. Uh, I wonder why. Ah, but it was not. But yeah, why not? Knight b2. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, or black didn't want a perpetual, but this is just losing a pawn. Bishop g7 and queen e1 takes takes and just a clear pawn up for white. Okay, this is not a, a development that I, that I expected. Now the tables have turned and now it's black who will fight for a draw. He should be able to do it though because the knight is quite active on, on c4 and uh, it's not so easy to get rid of it. But okay, really strange play by, by black. On board two, let's see what happened there. After b4, black played bishop f8, but queen b3. Okay, before taking on a5, black didn't take on why didn't take on a5? Bishop h6, bishop a3 now, so preparing to take, yeah. Bishop d2, queen c4. Okay, this is looking bad for black. A b c b c5, b c knight c5. Okay, I'm not sure this was the best for transformation for for white but maybe okay this needs to be calculated because um, if black manages to eliminate all the pawns on the on the queen side and then not suffer anything bad on the king side then it, he will save the draw but it looks extremely dodgy it looks extremely dodgy i mean the thing to calculate first is to take take and then queen c5 
queen a4 and then some checks and if this doesn't lose then then black is fine but i somehow get the impression that this is very 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 dangerous so just probably mating no well sample line yeah sample line not simple sample okay this looks very dodgy for black on board three stoshevsky okay queens have been exchanged white managed to activate his light pieces and the sea pawn even made one step further but it's still too messy but that's typical stoshevsky he always liked to play messy games so probably he's enjoying enjoying this mm. I'm not sure if the time on Black's clock is correct, showing only 30 seconds and control has been passed. So I'm not sure whether the 15 minutes have been added or he's still playing on the on the initial 90 minutes. Uh, okay, here either White makes something out of the sea pawn and wins, or he doesn't and it's a draw. So I don't think White risks losing here, and they lost on board four. So now okay they are the macedonians are hoping that uh, well they don't lose on board two and maybe they make something on board one and three but it's still pretty difficult to say um and the team of england against slovakia board four as we said the exchanges were drawn okay in this position the position was agreed drawn Whereas, the, oh, okay, okay, this is major. So I said that I was expecting a draw here when this happened, but somehow black managed to lose a pawn and, uh, well, and enter some sort of a, a bishop endgame. So bishop h6, rook e4. Okay, should I'm pretty sure this should be equal, but let's see what happened. Rook e4, rook g1. Okay, bishop d4. Okay, nice tactic. Bishop f8, bishop a7, but probably loses the pawn on, on d6 somehow. Yeah, rook f1. Attacking the queen. Rook d4. Okay, rook, queen d4, bishop d4. Oh yeah, I just lost the pawn. Yeah, then this should be winning then. Okay, central line. Okay, something happened to black. Maybe in time trouble. Maybe he, he miscalculated, but... In these complications he just uh, overdid it i'm pretty sure there must have been ways to to play something simpler and uh, and, uh, and and keep the draw so okay but as it is okay this should be winning now i think for for white so okay team england eventually may still win this match okay let's go back to the other s 50 section because things are happening very fast okay um let's see board three. Oh, okay this is definitely a draw now on board three bogdanovsky novikov i don't know how the a pawn was changed exchanged uh so we left off somewhere uh, here white played queen d8 activating the queen sacrificing the pawn on f4 but threatening bishop d6 so queen f6 queen a8 going after the a pawn okay king f7 and uh, okay this is okay this is now a relatively simple draw because white can just defend the pawn on c5 and nothing will happen so this will be a draw and Yermolinsky stanoyevsky He's still winning for white even though okay if black will resist if he wins the b5 pawn then the pass b pawn will be dangerous but that's not easy to do as the bishop will likely be defending it soon enough for example knight f4 and or just move the knight and the bishop is defending it but then maybe black will try to counter attack along the first rank Rooks, okay, so this happened quickly. G6, rook f4, rook c3. Okay, 
black even is just a rook for two pieces and a pawn and trying to muddy some waters but objectively should be lost okay so we expect the match on board one to finish in two two i would say um, and uh, okay the adams david what happened here let's see uh g 5 okay we left off king e8 uh -huh. adams played rookie one defending the pawn 97 rerouting the knight but where to maybe he couldn't deal with the rook threat of rook f7 the pawn can be defended so 97 rook f7 knight c6 at least black made it to the, to the time control but he's two pawns down so i would expect adams to win this and in view of the situation on board four being around drawish that means that well team england can win this match and if the match on board one finishes in a draw then they will take keep let's say the hundred percent score so okay the previous break wasn't that long so we'll take another one now because we saw what's more or less going on in the matches and if we manage to find somebody uh, well a guest to join us we will certainly do so otherwise we'll come back to wrap up the results see you soon
Čekaj samo njemu ovdje, kako je ta bota vidina vestija? Čekaj. A, dobro je, dobro je, dobro je. Ne, 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 ne. Tuka se gleda dobro. Ne znamo vas, ne znamo. Ok, before we start, actually, I have to tell you that I was really impressed by that game, the, the book that you wrote, uh, wrote to Chess Improvement. You wrote this in the 90s and, it, and yeah, it, this yeah. was actually, I mean, okay, I was an international master by then. It was difficult. That period was not easy to find good books and yours was really an exception. No, well, I actually wrote it for international masters. Ah, well. <laughs> I mean, uh, under the guise of a general improvement book, uh-huh. there was basically a book for very strong players. Yes. And uh, honestly, no, well, it may be a fun read for anyone, no, but it's seriously, it's you had to be like 2400. Yeah, yeah, yeah. feed at that time to really get what I was talking about. No, 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 yeah, it was really, really very <laughs> nice because you were touching not only theoretical aspects, psychology as well, games, planning, uh, everything, yeah? yeah? I really found it really kind of... Really, well, thank you for your yeah. kind words here. Yeah. Yeah, That's is. why I basically didn't want to write another one because ah, I'm right. not really a book writer, I'm more of a journalist or a uh-huh. commentator. Book is not really my cup of tea. Mm. And I thought, I've seen so many bad sophomore efforts, yeah. like horrible, like yeah. take Jonathan Rawson, he writes this brilliant book, yes. The Seven Deadly Chess yes. Scenes, and then it comes up with something with zebras, and which zebras? is complete garbage. <laughs> Or take John Watson, he writes this great book, yes, the position I quote that, yes. uh, Modern Chess Strategy, yes, Advances yes. in Snimzevich, brilliant book. Yes. And then he writes the sequel, which is unreadable. There is nothing there. Uh-huh. So, so many people fall. My friend, Wari Christensen, yes. storming the barricades, yes. beauty, uh-huh. rocking the ramparts, trash. <laughs> so, I mean, people should not write more than one book, yeah, basically. That's, that's my good, idea. That, Unless point. you're a book writer, then uh-huh. you can write. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, yeah. 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 No, again, most of us chess players, we're good for one book. Yeah, you put everything in that one book and then... No, well, uh, well, maybe people think oh, I've got much more, but there is a reason why you made the cuts to begin with. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, there was a reason for that. So an attempt, you know, to scrape, you know, from every shelf, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, in your databases, whatnot, yes, yes. and cram it in, the, uh, in your second effort. This is just it's produces not, garbage, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, but it's, it's economically motivated, yeah? Uh, no, not really, you know. None not of the, the second people, book, I mean. None of the people I mentioned needed the money. No, oh, really? They just did it because they thought, oh, the book is so popular. Ah. Let me write the sequel, you know, so I give more to the people. Aha, uh-huh, I see, okay, oh, okay. So. <laughs> okay, maybe. No, it's, it's never the economic reasons, but uh-huh. as far as I can tell. Obviously, I cannot speak for everyone, right, right. but... No, mm. anyways. Okay, so. let's let's yeah, let's let's start. Yeah, I'm not to yeah, take yeah. your time. Okay, we we go. Give us. Okay. Okay, welcome back again. A very short break. <laughs> Unexpected, yeah. Hard work today and uh, we have another guest in the studio. We have Alex Yermolinski who managed to win his game against Von Kostanovski and likely this uh, uh, saved the match for the Americans because uh, on board three we had a draw as expected and uh, in view of Nedev's win on board two we have the uh, drawn match 2-2. So Alex, yeah, can you please uh, take us through the game? Through the game? Yes, uh, I think this, I mean this was theory obviously, but I think this Queen D5 was just a bad improvisation. Yeah? Well, I cannot say that it's bad. You know. oh, okay. These days, you know, pretty much everything is playable. And you play yeah. a move that takes your, your opponent off the game plan. Uh-huh. And, uh, no, I mean, I tend not to criticize moves that play that okay. early in the opening, particularly. We're not talking about some club players that can really right. play something stupid. You know. <laughs> every, you know, every player here, but I mean among the best teams. Yes. No, has the right to improvise and look for their okay. own ideas and uh, talking about that only because you want the game, it's just uh-huh. it's wrong. Okay, good point, good point. Okay. So Queen C2, no, you yeah. don't want to exchange, obviously. No, I do. Knight A6. Yeah, and this, because of the ideas with Knight B4 followed by Queen F5, I uh-huh. pretty much have to restrain the Knight. So just to show, yeah, Queen B4. No, well, on, on Knight C3 he will play it, uh, Knight to B4. Yeah. 
and then the queen goes to f5. Yes, and that's no, it. I mean, I, I, unless I go to b1, but he would still go to f5. Yes, the Romanishian so. ideas, yeah. <coughs> well, excuse me, yeah, yeah, so it's not good for white. So anyway, a3 has a3? to be played. Well, okay. I'm pretty positive. Okay. And then black sort of misplayed the, I mean, misplays the pieces, but uh -huh. but they get to eliminate the central pawn. So c5, so c5? I think, okay. yeah. Knight c3 with Knight c3, queen h5. Okay, and takes. Good. Actually, that seeing the queen on h5 made me think of one line that I played uh -huh. Years ago, in the, in the Boga Indian, uh, no, well, the queen also gets to h5, and it's uh -huh. probably not entirely solid, but practical problems. Uh -huh. So I took because otherwise it takes on d4 yes. and plays e6 e5. But now, the, well, now now bishop takes. Okay. Oh, no, I mean they have one bad piece. Exactly. The knight on e6, exactly. but so what? You know, this is not some kind of a. Uh, my impression was that you were getting a great Catalan version because of that knight on a6 and to some extent the bishop on c8. No, well, if a6 to 5 is played, then it's a different game. Well, I may talk about the Catalan or whatnot, but black uh -huh. doesn't have to stay passive. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Uh, castles, castles, e5, this was. No, well, e5, that's the whole thing. Yes, but then, yes. now, no, well, yeah, the knight is not looking good on a6, but other pieces, uh, the bishop can go to h3. Yes. And, what not? No, it's all about the knight. If you can make something out of it, then you're fine. If not, then he's fine. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> no, okay. Well, bishop g5, I planned uh, okay. ahead of the time, and then came knight g4. No, well, I was looking at that. I kind of was trying to convince myself that that cannot uh -huh. work. But when it was actually played on the board, okay. well, aside of knight g4, if black just plays bishop to e6, yes. No, again. Well, what? How exactly white is going to proceed here? Before, uh, probably? No, before it can Go move back. the bishop back. Yeah. Well, so, you know, the rooks will come, come out on open files. And, uh, I mean, I'm not so sure about this position, come uh -huh. to think of that. Yeah, the knight on a6, but white cannot expect mm. any kind of immediate resolution here. Maybe just take first and then before, yeah? Well, yeah, so. Go back, yeah. The yeah. well, problem is that I never brought my knight to d5, which would have been the the way mm -hmm. to, to do it. So, I mean, and the rest of the stuff, well, yeah, maybe I it's mean, not that straightforward. Rook c8, queen c7. Uh, uh, who, knows? who knows? Anyways, so, yeah, so we'll, knight g4. Yeah, well, that's interesting. And uh, of course, the move I was planning to play would be a gross blunder. So I was <laughs> looking at knight e4. Okay. Then comes bishop to f5. F5. Okay, yes, yes. And, uh, no, well, well, the problem is that if I go h3, I probably lose on the spot. Knight takes f2, rook okay. takes, and then there is little move queen g6, oh. which is... All tied up, yeah? No, well, yeah. And then if I protect it by moving my knight yeah. away, no, and all that capture on g5. Yeah. So, basically, that's... Wow, that's a nice line. No, yeah. Yeah. So, so in the last knight moment you corrected course, yeah. <laughs> oh well, I really no nobody would want to play a move like this, but mm. but basically I I didn't see any alternatives. I must force the issue. So, yeah, but then then I don't think he has compensation here. No, that is rather hard to tell. So after the capture on F two, well, first off, uh, well he didn't have to take right immediately. I mean, well, yeah. Maybe he could have gone h6. First, yeah. And prevent yeah. bishop e3 as you had in the game, yeah? No, well, yeah. So, yeah. You, you well, uh, I understand that he wanted to complete his development. So that's why mm -hmm. there was capture and bishop d7 and whatnot. But the position, no, it's not entirely solid, this whole concept, because white has two minor pieces. So maybe yeah. the way to, to continue was this. And then bishop goes to d2, yeah, I assume, you know, you then now you take, no, well, and yeah, and in this position. And now bishop somewhere, yeah? Yeah, I'm not sure. Now I can get the bishop out to f5. Here, maybe e4. Yeah, well, I'm, and oh, then, yeah, and he goes there. 
and then it's going to be quickly rook c8 and, and maybe a5 at some point maybe a5 yeah so no well, anyway this this cannot be resolved you know in a few mm. moves uh, so the capture i think the position offers block certain play uh -huh. and uh, i but i was happy to see that slow development uh -huh. okay. with bishop, bishop d7, d7 so yeah. i'm happy to get you my knight get back, back yeah. And, uh, no, and the bishop back. Yeah, this this felt like like I don't know. No, in my understanding, you know, black can play this for for a long time as long as I don't lose the pawn on a seven. Uh huh. Uh, so, well, because if black loses this pawn on a seven, they the pretty much committed to to starting some kind of attack. Yeah. And and uh, no, bringing it home. Yes. At yes. least uh, for uh, enough. Uh, but if uh, if the spawn is not lost, however, in this position, so I'm, I'm questioning the previous move, rook a8. a8 okay. He probably didn't think much of the a7 pawn, uh -huh. just thinking, ah, well. I just need to. Yeah, I need to go forward and all that. But uh -huh. no. Strangely so you're enough, saying that he should have played more positionally, not going va bank and. Uh, no, well. Just keep yeah. his material, yeah. I mean. But it, it it changes very quickly this position. Uh -huh. right? Maybe before that, when my knight was still on a4, here, yeah. maybe, maybe some kind of play was possible. Uh -huh. But here, of course, it would have been better if h6 and then f5. It would have been uh -huh, no yeah. problem. But now the bishop can possibly come to e3. Mm -hmm. So if the if the tactics, no, rather the immediate active attempts don't work. Then black should think of the pawn on a7. Uh -huh. Oh, the rook a8 is visually uh, no, visually good because you bring and everything. Yes. But in fact, you know, if you drop the a7 pawn, as he yeah, did in the game, yeah. no, that's what happened in the game. Although I managed to, I managed to confuse myself. So after this, okay, he went f5, b5. This is forced. Yeah, because f4 is just yes. rather hopeless. Knight c7, and you took. No, well, yeah, that's my best move in the game. <laughs> the of course. Yeah. So basically, now White is sitting on the winning advantage as long as he doesn't mess up the tactics, exactly. which of course I did. Unfortunately, so, but only one move. Well, mm, the thing is that no, how long can I can I ignore the pawn in h2? So black can. No, King g1, I think, is sensible. No, also, you have two for the for the bishop or queen as you did. No. Yeah. So. And I you also get away from the. No, king g8. No, it's obviously it's not the only move. There, there are many moves no. black can play. On king g1, he probably could have gone rook to f6, thinking of rook, rook h6. H, yeah, rook f6. Like this. Thinking of rook h6. No, everything is kind of vague here. Obviously, mm -hmm, no. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, it's an idea, so the game goes on. King h8, he did. The king h8, I played queen, f2. queen to f2 to avoid the pin. But yeah. but the thing is that I I misjudged uh, this whole thing, you know. So the rook went to c8. c8 okay, 95. No, well, yeah, but maybe I should not have gone there. I didn't. No, otherwise I don't have any good squares. Yeah, you I go on the knight to maybe rook c2 or Yeah, something. no, of course. So I played knight d5, okay. and now it becomes rather messy. f4 okay. is a great move. I, I kind of thought I'll get to play f4 myself, and uh -huh. I never did. Uh -huh. So when it came to this point, no, I realized that my, it's difficult to hold that knight on e5. So I did go G4, G4 Queen F7, did. but I miscalculated. So Rook E1. Yeah, the Knight on D5 is shaky and the Bishop no. is still now kind of passive, so still some real. No, well, I, I thought that Bishop, you know, will cover my king, but uh -huh. no, okay, after Rook E1, if you So since that knight well that knight B6 I mean I I blundered, right? I didn't see knight G5. Uh -huh. So the whole thing, you know, then after that, you know, I started Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's difficult to admit that you missed something, so you yeah. you just want to keep poker face, you know, and, oh, yeah. and and then in the end, you know, you end up playing that first move that comes to mind, <laughs> and uh, which 
okay, after knight g5. Okay. No right, well, I can go h4 and play that position. Uh -huh. But I wasn't happy with the, okay, it takes the knight. Takes, takes, yeah? Yeah. And takes on b5. Maybe. Yeah, takes on b5. Now my, no, my bishop is not lost. So I play, maybe I suppose, bishop to f1, yeah. But I yeah. lost an important pawn, and uh, my bishop is kind of stupidly stuck. And, yeah, uh, and if you, if you manage to get rid of the queenside pawns, then all, everything on one No, round. I have to try to play for an attack or something, uh -huh. so... I know exactly what I should do. Play my pawn to a4. Put the bishop here, yeah? Or play my pawn to a4, and if he takes a take on e5. But this is very iffy. It is. Well, it's not the kind of position, and there's always... But then this is a passed pawn, and... Well, no, well, but I'm, well, yeah, I'm stopping it for yeah, now. Mm -hmm. So, but of course it's far from clear. Far from clear, yeah. yeah far yeah. from clear. So I didn't want to do this, I didn't want to give up my pawn on b5. I was yeah, telling so myself, you know, no. I probably had the time to protect it with the move a4, and I didn't. Uh -huh. So then came the blunder. Yeah, this here, yeah. And now... Yeah, rook takes f3. I know, zero time. Because, no, I, I looked at uh, this, you know, so I thought this is the line I'm going for. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I mean, I can double check everything. Obviously, well, uh, players of my age, they can avoid blunders, but at the cost of extra time. Extra time because yeah. you have to look at, you know, just, you can't trust yourself anymore. <laughs> yeah, because you have uh, history of blundering in any position. Oh. So. Yeah, so this is the... Oh, the, well, the, the, yeah. The, no, okay, well, anyway. Well, uh, I, I'm not claiming that, you know, I had a great game today mm. to begin with. But, I mean, at least just looking at the, 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 the computer evaluations, actually, this was the only problem. Otherwise, your moves were more or less okay. No, well, it only takes one. Yeah, it only takes one to, to, to <laughs> wreck everything. I, yeah. I know that. So, look at three, you know, I'll yeah, probably okay. resign here. Or maybe I'll play Queen C5, pretending that yeah, everything's according like to the plan. No, okay. Well. But here, like, I don't know, Rook G3, F3, something. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. No, well, most likely, yeah. Yeah, this looks, looks horrible. No, well. Certainly, yeah. yeah. No, okay, forget about it. But yeah, but he, okay, then, and then it was okay, then uh, sort of. Yeah, well, here white must be winning. Yeah. Well, queen c5, not to let him centralize the queen. Yeah. I mean, it's probably over because, objectively yes, speaking, the black doesn't have enough. And, uh, yeah. No, well, if that's the end game. Yeah, the end game should be, should be just, uh, yeah. No, 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 many ways. I, yeah, I, I did this. And I could have uh, gone after the b6 pawn. That would be uh -huh. winning as well. But, you know, I just got a little nervous. I thought, you know, I'll eliminate the pawn so my king uh -huh. doesn't get trapped. Okay. Okay. And then, yeah, then it's game over. Yeah. No, well, with one blunder, but... Okay, so Honestly, okay. well, I... No, you probably know that I wasn't supposed to be here. Yes, right? yes, yes. This was the last minute. So we have the far placement, better, yeah. far better player, you know, like available, <laughs> uh, Vladimir Akobian. But yes, yes. No, well, some some things happened and he couldn't make yeah, it, and I just it. happened to be. Ah, you were close by. Yeah. Ah, okay. I was close by. I was in Turkey. Ah, okay. So I was able to. Arrive here on fairly short notice, yeah. Okay. No but you, you know how it is in chess. I mean, sometimes when you get into a tournament in the last moment, you have a great event. Yeah, people keep missing <laughs> moves like rook takes f3, then I See, win so every game. See, so maybe the signs yeah, are good course. then, yeah? Of course. Maybe yeah. the signs are good. Okay, Alex, thank you very much. I won't keep oh, you. You're Enjoy welcome. Enjoy your dinner. You're welcome, yeah. And yeah, congratulations on saving the, the match mm. for your team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, well, anyways. Mm. We'll see. Whenever you rest your your top player and the team captain, no well, uh -huh. bad things may happen. <laughs> <laughs> so thank that's you. Thank could, you, yeah. could have been worse. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. All right, thank yeah. You. yeah, yeah. So that was Alex Irmolinsky, uh, very strong player and uh, very good coach. And as you could see, author. Even though, uh, as he told me before we started the stream, that. Uh, he does not really feel like writing another book after Road to Chess Improvement, which was a really a masterpiece in the 90s. 
but he doesn't feel like writing another one. Uh, so yeah, the, the the match is finished on board one, two, two, uh, and the second the board match on board two, uh, Arkel managed to save the draw. So it was. Uh, we'll just quickly see that. Mm. It was a repetition somewhere here where we saw it. Rook a1, queen f7, and here we just saw a repetition more or less. So draw, great save by Keith. And on board one, Adams is two pawns up. And under normal circumstances, he would wrap this up. The last move being b4. Um, so let's see what the idea is. If c takes b4, normally the idea is to undermine the knight. So maybe rook d1 or rook e4 or even knight e4. So I expect this to be winning for, for white. So that means that England will win the match and mm, maintain the 100% score. Uh, let's have a quick view of the S65. <clears throat> oh, this is an interesting position that we had in the game Terry Chapman against Alois Lunch because I said that this was winning and we saw this position after bishop c7. So king, this, king e6, a5, bishop d6, a6, a7, king b7. And now g4 okay this is well i'm not sure uh g4 is the best way to do it because maybe just playing bishop f2 and then sending the king around something like this maybe not via d4 but via c4 and like this and then just collecting pawns maybe this was Maybe. But the white played g4 and after takes, he took with the pawn, h5, king h5. And our black's defensive idea is to obviously give up the bishop for the past h pawn. And then we have a bishop of the wrong color here. So white's plan to win is to use the bishop to prevent black from taking that pawn. So, um, but this is not that easy because okay obviously now black will play bishop h4 even though bishop f2 then bishop drops back and still prevents h4 and uh, what that will mean that at some point white will leave the defense of the pawn on a7 in order to use the bishop uh, to uh, ensure the advance of the h pawn and then, then it will be a race whether the king comes back in time or white manages to uh, push the pawn far ahead so uh, this is also probably two four six it's a table based position so maybe I can just consult it and see whether uh, this is a, a win or not I just need to find it okay so we have a king on f3 we have a bishop i'll just set up the position and just consult table basis my king is on a8 and bishop is on a1 so it appears to be a win a win for white so that means that bishop should not the king should not be able to come back in time so theoretical win but still needs to be played out in fact uh, according to uh, table bases white wins in 22 moves from here so let's see but if white wins that's a, a huge victory for the english team uh, in the meantime on board one the game was drawn board one of board one match which is north macedonia germany in fact, white offered the draw after g5. Strange decision, but most likely objectively correct, but in view of the not-so-great position on the other 
boards maybe it was premature on board two so what we had here was bishop c5 bc5 queen c5 and now not queen a4 because of the mate that i showed but queen d8 now black's hope is that opposite colored bishops uh, will somehow save him but this is very very difficult because uh, white can combine threats against black's weakened king so check king h6 queen f7 bishop b4 bishop d5 bishop a5 bishop c6 bishop e8 threatening mate queen g7 queen e6 i wonder whether even if the opposite called bishop's endgame may be won because these pawns are on light squares and the king cannot really move but why decided to keep the queens on board and continue playing he still has more than half an hour to finish the game opposed to 15 minutes for black this is very difficult to save for black and the, the only chance is on board three but here we have that okay black will not lose this the bishops are strong the pawn will never promote because king is close so this is maximum a draw for white and that means that uh, germany will win this match thanks to that win on board four they may even win with a bigger score in case on board two meister beats kralevsky so germany will win the match most likely england will win the match and they will maintain their 100 percent scores let's see the remaining remaining games in the s50 section okay actually the only remaining game here is adams against david Adams against David, b4 has been played, still thinking for, black is still thinking after b4, and uh, what to do, yeah, so most likely, if, let's say cb, I guess rook d1, and Blake may even end up mated because knight he just won check yeah the knight is okay one more but then the king runs away yeah yeah here and then white starts the attack so b4 seems to be winning for white and uh well will win the match for england so basically uh, we have we're waiting for this one game Adams against David to finish in a win for white and in the s65 section we still have a couple of games ongoing but uh, Chapman is expected to win whereas team Macedonia is fighting but unfortunately without too many chances of saving the match so it was an interesting day today just generally speaking a lot of exciting games and i think by far the game of the day was the crushing attacking game by nedef beating former world champion candidate jan elvest with the black pieces in a miniature in 20 odd moves so okay uh here i see that black likely no after b4 actually black is still thinking 12 minutes left for david mm. well he can spend time but well not much to think of because when the position is bad all the time in the world will not help you great win by adams uh, by the way, uh, he okay. If we look at the game as as a whole, it started with a great opening preparation, and this uh, he prepared this rare idea of knight cb5, bishop d3 in the uh, Taiman of Sicilian, and then he obtained advantage out of the opening. And but what I'm I'm most impressed by is the way he uh, neutralized black's active 
attempts on the king side with g5, h5, and so on. Uh, you would expect a lesser player to panic, to miss something, and allow too much counterplay. But that's why these players like Adams were world class players because they are accustomed to dealing with these type of problems in their games. And uh, even by stronger players, by David, he's a very good grandmaster himself, but Adams has converted uh, positions, has converted advantages against the best players in the world, starting from Kramnik and Anand and every, everybody else. So, and you can be sure that these players created, tried to create problems to him, counterplay, attacks and so on, but he, he nevertheless won these games when he had the advantage. So, uh, uh, these players know how this is done. They, they know what to expect. They know what needs to be calculated. They know need, what needs to be done to control the counterplay. Uh, when the opponents desperately throw at them when at disadvantage. And this is what we saw in this game. Uh, David tried to confuse him by pushing the pawns, but uh, Adams just calculated everything. Knight h2, collected the pawn on g4, and then just uh, bishop f4, g4, systematically um, repulsed any activity that uh, Black had. And see, by move 40, he was and he is already uh, uh, winning. David is still thinking, well, what he can come up with really. Uh, for example, I don't know, move like knight c2, attacks the rook and the pawn on b4, but uh, as I said, the idea for, black, for white is rook d1 and to go after the uh, pawn on d7. Notice how great this knight on g5 is. It's both an attacking piece it helped the rook take the pawn on f7. Now it's protected by the rook. Yeah. And it's just simply ideal in guarding the king by covering the h3 square. And just this one knight effectively neutralizes both black rooks on the h file and all of mm, black's counterplay on the h file. So it's a. Uh, it's a uh, well uh, what to do yeah, great piece and uh, well great play by white to land that piece on the square where it's most effective okay while well, waiting for this let's switch to the s65 okay uh meister kralevsky bishop before played and uh White, black can only wait here as uh, well nothing much to do but now bishop b4 allows a5 so uh, I'm not sure um, but maybe it was not possible to keep that bishop on a5 maybe I oh, know queen d5 has been played by white so now there is a threat of a5 sorry now there is a threat of a5 but this is untenable uh, just uh, uh, it's impossible to survive this so let's move board three king d1 black is uh, white black is still thinking but uh, uh, this can just uh, well uh, just maybe just bishop d6 go after the pawn uh, should be should be decent enough but okay for some reason black is still thinking so a win, win for the germans and let's check chapman okay he already pushed the pawn to h6 so let's see what happened bishop h4 bishop f2 bishop f6 king g4 bishop e3 bishop g5 and now the pawn goes forward h5 the king goes to g6 h6 and that's pretty much it because bishop f6 follows and the pawn promotes so a win for Terry Chapman and a huge win for Team England. Very tough match, which was hanging by a thread. Basically, everything depended on this game, which actually should have ended in a in a draw, but miscalculation by Black lost the pawn, and then very convincing conversion by 
Chapman. So great result for England. Okay, here Queen D5, Black is still thinking. Okay, on board three, Black is still thinking. Maybe this game has even finished, but we don't have the result just yet. And I see the the stream from the from the playing hall and. Uh, uh, Adams has also finished his game, so let's move there. Okay, before his okay, maybe just okay. We have 15 minute delay, so maybe some moves were still played. But uh, since the game is finished, that I'm pretty sure that Adams won. And uh, well, um, uh, we can only just I guess wait a bit longer and see um, if some more moves will be coming and from the look in the playing hole uh, like looking far back uh, uh, i can't really see if the the game on board one in s65 uh, the games are still ongoing or not so it appears that the majority of the games have finished by now so uh, we will soon be wrapping up but for now let's just stick a bit longer and say see if we get a bit some more moves in the meantime i'll just switch back again okay kralevsky still no moves Stoshevsky no moves okay and chapman should be finished by now because okay we, we bishop f6 is coming and that's pretty much it so we'll just look at these three games okay uh, Meister Kralevsky, okay, Queen d6 played. Uh, but now I think it's even a better version for maybe for white to exchange on d6, let's say, takes on d6, pushes a5, bishop goes back here, okay, and then bishop e8 to keep the king tied down to the defense of these pawns, then a6. And then just some f3 g4 and getting the king to the to, to the queen side should win the game so that was actually played take take a5 okay stoshevsky still nothing maybe it was just drawn but we don't know so likely 3-1 win for Germany against North Macedonia. Unfortunately, the surprise run of the host team finished in this round, even though they had really good positions, and except on board four where they misplayed the opening. But on the other boards, they had really good positions and they were not really looking set to lose the match. But as game progressed, well, they unfortunately, they were outplayed. Uh, but nevertheless, a very inspired uh, two victories in the first two rounds for the veterans of Macedonian chess okay let me move back to the game by Adams still nothing before I wonder why the translation doesn't show anything or if they finished or not but uh, Well, we can just wait. We <laughs> everything about the position. We already said what was important, and uh, well, just waiting for the black to make a move or just resign. Two minutes. That's showing here, and black has left. But we'll see what he decides to do. In the meantime, let's switch again. Okay, Kralevsky, okay, a5, black is thinking, Stoshevsky, okay, ah, bishop d6 was played here, okay. So yeah, black goes after the c7 pawn, but even if black wins the pawn, it's just a dead draw because uh, the knight uh, is untouchable on d4 and this extra pawn is a doubled pawn and black can never hope to achieve a passed pawn here because white just stays put even if black pushes f4, white will not touch anything. So just a, a draw. So let's move here. Bishop c5. 
okay a5 f5 was played a6 and bishop c5 okay so what um, uh, black is trying to do is to get rid of the pawns that are on light squares so what for example wants to uh, well let's say take on e4 and then push g5 and get rid of as many pawns as possible that are on light squares especially g6 and and uh, h5 so let's see how white decides to deal with this here actually it would be probably best to take on f5 and then play bishop e8 because that ties the king down to the defense of the h5 pawn forever and that's that sentence because if the king stays to to defend h5 the white king will just go and pick up the bishop for the a pawn and if the king doesn't stay then white will win the h pawn and then have another passed pawn so again the king will have to stay to guard that passed pawn and the same fate will happen so ah so actually surprisingly white did not played that he played f3 if the translation is right which okay let's see i'm not sure let me check if that's correct or not oh, i can't check now but okay we have moves on the adams board uh, black took rook d1 checking f3 checking e3 so this is what we looked at and well looks like game over looks like game over okay actually the position on board is king f3 the check on g1 hasn't happened yet still one minute left for david and he'll have to make quick moves here but it's just hopeless because it's um rook d7 is coming next and then mating threats of rook g7 96 and so on so okay rook f8 yeah he can try but just king e3 i'll just pick up the knight i guess and uh, there shouldn't really be a perpetual because the king is running away so let's say check here check there it's, that's it king e2 okay this is that's pretty much it yeah any time moment black will resign we can wait because again with one minute left on the clock he won't linger for too long even if he wanted otherwise he would lose on time So rook f f2 let's see but i guess king e3 and uh, well that's well nothing black can do so we really had an interesting day today the matches of the favorites did not disappoint and uh, well we will definitely have more interesting games in the next days because already there will no longer be easy matches even though it's only round three tomorrow round four the favorites have started playing each other and uh, there will only be tough matches ahead so uh, this is what normally happens when you have a Swiss event with uh, uh, a low number of entries and the point is that very quickly the favorites start to play each other and they start playing each other early and uh, in a way the, the event resembles a round robin because uh, by the end of the tournament the favorites would have played uh, the strongest teams uh, anyway uh, they would have played all the strongest teams 
So, but that's something good because we get, get to have high quality games and uh, and uh, well, good games to follow. So, okay, I think I don't know why moves are not going through. Rook f2 check and like why are we waiting for king e3 or something? Uh, I'm pretty sure that there is no time. I'm sure that Adams was not thinking in this position. So we can just wrap up the the uh, S50 section and uh, final look at the S65. Okay, Stoshevsky Kalinchev. Okay, Black won the pawn on c7, but we have a pretty dead drawn position here. Thanks to that that knight and all pawns being on dark squares and black having a light squared bishop whereas Meister Kralevsky white played f3 which again it's also possible because let's say it takes he can take either with the bishop or with the pawn both are possible but the point is probably when black plays g5 black uh, white can play bishop e8 and still tie down the king to the defense of the uh, h5 pawn and then the king will just go to the queen side note that black can never go after this pawn on g3 because the pawn will promote so this is winning but it will take some time uh, the point being that it doesn't make a difference for the result on the match okay Chapman won or even officially it won't make any result uh, many any difference on the result of the match because um, with the draw on on board three that is already 2-1 for germany and then uh, this already being winning even if white misplays it will be a draw somehow but then it's again a win for the german team which means that germany uh, maintains the 100 percent score and will likely play uh, well we'll see if they play england in the next round uh, who england who beat slovakia so we'll finish the live commentary for today. I hope you enjoyed it. We had really interesting games. We had some fantastic games. We had uh, guests in the studio sharing their thoughts. So thanks for being with us today. And we'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Have a good day.